Yeah, well, if, if you're ready to start the stream. Fine with me. I suppose I'll just look for it on, um, on Jerry's channel because I cannot find the stream he's doing. Yeah, it's right in the, um, the general tab on, on his channel. Um, yeah, I've got like 7,000 messages on this thing and literally. Yeah, uh, page down. Okay. Is this it? Fallout 4 face live. Yeah, okay. Cool. I'm staring at a power armor helmet, so I suppose we are. Hey, Kevin. <clears throat> hey, Kevin. Right on time, Kevin. Gary was late, though. Late to his own show. <laughs> is everybody really low volume, Kevin, or is it me? Uh, we had this problem last time too. Hey Brian, I was like, I was like, damn it, why am I still seeing my icons? Oh no, those are Gary's icons at the bottom of the page. <laughs> That's great. Well, let me. Uh... Is everybody really low volume, Kevin, or is it me? Hey, Vault Girl, how you doing? Got a good turnout uh, already. Good people already. All right, well, while Gary is adjusting the volume, let me introduce you to Gary, local four-pack and quick smoke podcast. Today, our special guests are Mark, two dicks, three ball, Jackson, or just Mark Jackson as you know him. Mark, say hi. Hello. And why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? What do you do for uh, YouTube videos? What are you planning? What are you playing? Oh, uh, my YouTube channel is all about what you can do with your butt in a cordless grill. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I noticed that in your uh, your uh, fractured butthole videos. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, everybody in the chat already knows, you know, I, I do Let's Plays, as many games as I can, try to keep a wide variety of games, do as many different ones as I possibly can, and, and uh, well, y'all know, we do this because we love it. Very true, very true. Definitely do not doing it to make it rich. <laughs> and I will say, if you need a variety of Let's Plays, visit Mark Jackson's YouTube page. We will have that up there in just a moment when Gary has a chance. And my our second guest is Draco Invictus. How are you doing today, Draco? What's going on, everybody? Hey, man, Mikey, I am just happy to be here hanging out with you guys. Nice. We are happy to have you. And why don't you tell us about your website, what you're playing, what you're planning, what's going on on it. Man, uh, let's see. Right now I'm still doing a uh, Let's Build series. Uh, I've turned it into a live stream on Sundays uh, for Fallout 4. And then I'm doing pretty much nightly uh, live streams for uh, State of Decay 2 as well. And uh, coming up uh, in just over a month, I will be doing uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider uh, live streams. And as soon as I can get a PS4, I will also be doing um, – I'll be producing videos for Detroit Become Human. Very nice. Those are some really, really heavy-hitting games coming up there. I forgot to mention, if, if you don't mind, Mike, uh, I forgot to mention the games that I've, I've got going on. Go right got ahead, a, brother. Got a list right here. Obviously, I'm doing Zelda and South Park 2. I've got Rage uploaded and ready to go. I'm going to release that closer to the date of Rage 2 coming out for Bethesda. Doom 3 BFGs up, ready to go. I've got a game called Ghost of Tale done. Far Lone Sales, Child of Light, and Bioshock Remastered 1 and 2. And uh, uh, future games, my plans for future games are ReCore, Fallout 76, of course, Doom Eternal, and Metro Exodus, Unravel 2. I've got Rage, the next loaded and ready to go. I'm really hoping to do closer Cyberpunk to the data for 76. Rage 2, coming out for That is a great lineup right there. But that's and like I two have, years away. I have watched his South Park. It is freaking hilarious. I love it.
Uh, I'm I'm assuming you're using OBS, correct? Okay. Um, the way I have my OBS set up is I have an audio output uh, as a source, and then I just assign it to whatever speakers I'm using uh, for Discord because I have Discord assigned to like my laptop speakers, and, and so that audio output capture I'm, I assign I'm as you're my using laptop OBS, speakers, and then it shows up. Okay. Um, the way I have my OBS. Good. All right, oh, hey, Chad, are we okay to go with this volume? Stronium. Nice. Let me throw something out there in chat real quick. Everybody that's in chat tonight is going to have a chance to win a $10 gift card from me just for showing up and being active in chat. So Ooh. it's going to be a couple of, yeah, you could choose PS4, Xbox, Steam, whatever. And it's going to take me a couple of weeks. I'm going to write all your names down and pull them out at random, you know, via hat. So, uh, but that's for, thanks for showing up. Hey, Ted. That is very nice of you, Mark. We appreciate you doing stuff like that. <laughs> all right so let's get uh right to the meat the the uh the reason why we're here let's do and this. and <clears throat> and just to let you all know i fooled you all this is actually pillow talk with about jesus uh we're not talking about video games and uh mark so when was the first time jesus made you discover yourself <laughs> are you sure are, are you serious kidding. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, our first subject is going to be Fallout 4. And, okay. Uh, um, I, Mark, uh, Gary, do you want to take the first one? When I first came upon the uh, robot racetrack, without a doubt, that was my favorite thing. I was like, oh, man, I'm so glad that, and I'm sorry to answer this question with a, a bad ending, but when I first came across a racetrack, uh, you know, I, I looked at it from a distance. I was like, man, I wonder if I can gamble. I wonder if I can bet. It's so fun to see this go on, and maybe I can show up and take participate and and what have you, and then, you know, you show up and you just get attacked. So, I mean, it was kind of anticlimactic. But when I first saw that racetrack, that was my favorite moment in Fallout 4. Uh, Gary, it looks like you got to adjust your volume again. We're having trouble hearing you. Yeah. And Draco, what did you think of that? Um, can you repeat the question? <laughs> I got lost. <laughs> yeah, now am I stuck to one thing or could I mention a couple different things? I guess right. now we have to uh, adjust Draco's volume too. Yep. Well, um, okay, can't hear me. All right, here, I'll move my mic a little bit closer. <clears throat> so one of the first things that I loved about Fallout 4 was the very first time I ever came out of the vault. That, that breaking daylight and then the world just kind of fades into view. 
I absolutely loved looking out over the landscape of the Commonwealth for the first time. That uh, and the entire beginning speech, the the war never changes speech, uh, really, really got to me the very first time I played Fallout Four. Now, one of the, my favorite segments, uh, because I like flawed characters, um, I love doing Kate's affinity quest. That's a good being, one. Being able to to fix, I'm doing air quotes there. Kate uh, is always a great time because I love her character. I'd like to add one if you guys don't mind. Yeah, go right ahead. I I like all the little Easter eggs as well, and I wanted to I wanted to add to what Draco said. I love it when games do that. When you said coming out of the vault for the first time, I got the same thing from uh, from. Uh, Bioshock, when you first see Rapture, or the Cloud City in Bioshock 3, or Zelda, when you first get out of the cave, or even Doom, when you first walk out of the little area and step into hell. I lay it all out for you like that, and it's it, in that beautiful way. I, I couldn't agree more with you, Vic. But uh, what I was going to say was uh, the little Easter eggs and little stories, you know, like uh, in Fallout 4, like... Like the bank robbery thing. There's no story to it, but you can look at it and put together how they were trying to rob the bank and it blew themselves up. Or the, uh, the audio log diary of the girl that ran away from home because she was pregnant. And you find her mm. bones in this little cabin. All those little nuanced things. I, I think that's another honorable mention for my favorite thing in Fallout. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, I think one of my favorite... Uh stories that uh or east eggs is what mark is calling them is uh the girl who uh was trying to figure out why her town was losing energy and uh, it turned out that the scientists were making the experiment on the experimental weapon and end up getting uh um the whole town raided by the uh the institute yeah and then there was a university the, point yeah yep and then there's that one with a pink food paste that was be, being served to the school. And I mean, we could go on and on, but yeah, they're great. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm going to actually, I'm going to kind of direct this question towards Mark. Because, you know, I, I, I harassed you for the longest time to <laughs> play uh, Fallout Frost. And you're like, you know, I'm kind of done with Fallout. I'm, I'm sick of it. I'm moving on, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what burnt you out with Fallout 4? Uh, well, I, I went through the game twice. I've got about 2,200 hours into it, which I think is a lot, but you, you guys already know there's a lot of Fallout players out there that kill me in hours in game. Um, really, the straw that broke the camel's back with me was the day the Creation Club downloaded onto my system. That was the day I uninstalled the game. I'd rather masturbate with a, with a belt sander than go with a CC. And I've done that, folks. Trust me, it's not fun. <laughs> so, uh, but no, I, I just got a little bit tired of it. You know, it, I, I, look, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Is, is Fallout 4 a, a, a great game? Yeah, it is. Is it a great Fallout game? The answer is no. And let me, let me amend this. Mm -hmm. I might be going to, I might be going back to Fallout 4 from what I've seen of this Fallout Miami mod. Yes, 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 yes. I, I have seen some of it. It looks great. And Mike, if it makes you feel any better, I played a little Frost on a friend's PC, but I've, I've gone all the way through Dust. So, I mean, I've been there, done that a little bit. Right, right. Well, you, uh, you've had a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, <clears throat> I guess you call it modded adventures for Fallout. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think one was uh, Max or something like that. Maxwell's World, Fusion City Maxwell. Rising. Yeah. That was a great one, by the way. If you guys have never seen that mod and would like to see it played, check it out on Mark's uh, on channel because, god damn, his commentary on it is fucking hilarious. It was a good mod, too. All right, Gary, you're next. Go ahead, Vic. I went first last time. Uh, favorite companion. I, you know what? I just got to go with Valentine. I got to go with Nick. 
because his story writing is wonderful. Now, there are some great companions, and that is something that Bethesda really does well. No two companions are the same. They're all very different. I like, you know, bringing in McCready from Fallout 3. I like that whole tie-in. I like having Strong around because he says some funny shit on occasion. But overall, I think Nick Valentine really, really makes the companion game so much better. I agree with that. Um, real quick before I answer, uh, Brian Brian posted in the comments, was CC that much of a deal breaker? And I'm sure he means that towards me. Uh, I'm, I'm anal, Brian. Maybe, you know, there's probably a lot of people that don't feel the same way about it. You know, and as Ted's saying, there's nothing inherently wrong with it. Not interested most in the offerings. And, you know, I just, I'm very leery to, to explain my uh, CC thing. Very leery because Bethesda's tried this before with paid mods and it blew up in everybody's face. And the way the the way the gaming culture is going nowadays, like if you look at Rockstar and they canceled an entire single player DLC to go with a multiplayer and made a tremendous amount of money on GTA five, okay, that's fine. But now Bethesda with Fallout Shelter, which is, if I remember correctly, their most played game, they have tasted blood when it comes to uh when it comes to microtransactions. So I'm, I'm concerned about the way the community is going. That's the reason why it's a big deal to me, Brian. Um, so so me... It's, the, it's the general principle of the thing, not the creation club in and of itself. Absolutely. Let, yeah, let me let me ask everybody this question. Let let me ask everybody this question. You guys and and everybody in chat. Uh, you know, I mean, going with Creation Club, you get as opposed to third party mods out there, say on the Nexus, through the Creation Club, you're getting like ninety percent less mods and less quality mods, and you have to pay for a lot of them. I mean. That, I don't like that. <laughs> now, now, one thing, let's keep in mind, the, the overwhelming majority of Creation Club content is created by third-party modders. It is not created by Bethesda. Correct. You know, I know Eleonora has a couple things on the, the Creation Club. She has some great mods on the Creation Club. Oh, yeah. But that hasn't stopped her from doing her mods on nexus mods or on bethesda.net or anything like that either so i don't see i i don't see creation club taking the place of third party mods like nexus mods or you know bethesda.net as long as the tools are out there modders are going to use those tools because they want they why do i mod you know i'm not looking to get anything on creation club I mod because I want to put something out there that people might enjoy. Oh, I agree. And, and um, as far as, you know, going down, and I just want to touch on this really quick, looking at Fallout 76. I know we're going to talk about 76 in a little bit, but, but it has to do with microtransactions in Fallout 76, and that's why I wanted to bring it up really quickly. I will probably be buying microtransactions, and I have bought nothing for Creation Club, but I probably will buy stuff for Fallout 76, if I like the game. Because mm -hmm. if they're promising DLC content for free down the road, then you know what? I'm going to support Bethesda, and, and I'll throw some bones their way for, for some microtransactions. Because you know what? I spent, what, $30 for, for the season pass on Xbox One, Another $35 for Season Pass on PC just so that I could mod with, with all the DLC content. So I'm okay. I mean, whether I'm paying it, you know, as a Season Pass or buying DLCs one-off, if I don't have to do that for a game, then I'll support, the, I'll support them in the, the whole microtransaction thing to, you know, get a couple extra walls or maybe some more paintings or posters or something like that. I'm okay with that. 
as long as that's the extent of it. When they oh, started yeah. throwing out OP guns and stuff like that, I'm done. Yeah, pay to win. Oh, definitely. You know, and, and it, you guys brought up some really great valid points. And <clears throat> I just hey, want to add in. Hey, Otto. Uh, I just want to add in, like, when you use mods, okay, everybody knows you take a chance. Of, of course. Growing up your game. And I think with the Creation Club, even though you're paying for it, it's a little safer, I think, than using mods from a third, you know, company. Well, that was that was the intention, though. And that was the intention so that they could get more mods on PS4s. That, that was the 100%. I don't think that they were planning on doing Creation Club. I don't think that that was an initial thought when they built Fallout 4. But when Sony kind of threw in the no external assets thing, you know, from third-party mods, they said, okay, let's get some of those mods that have third-party assets because if you look at most everything that's on Creation Club, it has script extenders. It has all that other stuff that you couldn't otherwise get on a PS4. Now, um, this wasn't one of my questions that I, I planned before, but um, it... it you know, you you talk about PS4 and, and Sony, how they pretty much screwed the pooch on a lot of areas. Do you think eventually with them doing uh, no more third, no third party uh, mods and won't do cross uh, consoling, do you think eventually they're going to shoot themselves in the foot and go the way of the dodo? Oh, absolutely. Watch yes. this. Hey, chat, how many of you are PS4 players that are buying a PS5? Yeah. There you go. That was my question. <laughs> I won't even buy their... After the debacle with the PS4 and the PS3, I won't even buy their TVs anymore. I'd like to I'd like to joke that the day that Microsoft uh, starts putting out keyboards and mice as standard equipment with their consoles, Sony PlayStation be finished. It's, it's oh, a yeah. joke, but you know, there's a little bit of there's a little bit of mirthlessness in there. Well, and looking at the chat, it's a hundred percent. Yeah. No one's buying a PS five. Nobody. And I'm yeah. not surprised. Vic, are you surprised? No, not at all. Yeah, not, not at all. Bad. As a matter of yeah. fact, uh, I, I know a guy that, uh, you know, that, that I've talked to not in the circle of people that we normally hang out with, and he is a PS4 player, and he won't be buying one either. Yeah, I've been a, a loyal PlayStation player since, you know, they first started coming out, and that's all. I've, I bought an Xbox once way back, played Fable, got bored of it, sold it, and uh, I'm telling you, um, if I'm... Really moving towards uh, getting the Xbox uh, S because I am sick of uh, Sony's bullshit. I really yeah, am. We could go on and on about that, but uh, real quick uh, before we get on to the next question, uh, you asked uh, you asked Vic uh, who is a favorite companion in Fallout Four. Uh, were you asked? My favorite. Okay, all right. Yeah, my favorite's Hancock. 
you know, the way you meet him, you know, that little thing, the speech that he gives and, and then how saucy he is. And then I'll never forget when I had him as a companion and went to sleep and woke up and what he said. <laughs> so I just really liked Hancock a lot. Again, ghouls are, you know, they're tighter than you think they are. <laughs> you get past the smell, you're good, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yummy, yummy. Wow. Yes. Wow. Spread that over your <laughs> toast in the morning. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have to agree with uh, both you, Hancock and um, Nick, and especially Nick. I'm a big fan, Nick fan, because he just, the, the, he's a, a, a character who's got a level head. You know, he and I said it before. I said it on my la our, our last podcast. He is like the Jiminy Cricket of companions. He will say, "Do you really think that's a smart idea?" You know, you know. He's like, "Well, I don't think you should do that." Well, you know, Nick has some of the best lines. I mean, they gave because I've looked through every single voice line when i was doing the evolution thing and i was twisting the story around with the institute to to play out Stu's thing i was looking for anyone else that had some of the lines that that nick had and nick was the only character that uh, that brought up you know that quoted nietzsche which i know is not an original quote but i mean you know he's they gave nick some of the best material in the game and the voice actor did it beautifully. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was the only character that had extended quests into the DLC, too. So I was just going to say that. Thank you. Yeah. It, it, he's a phenomenal companion. He really is. And they, his story, his backstory is just so, like, like I wouldn't mind seeing a video game just with Nick in it. His story. That'd be pretty cool. That would be cool. There's a spinoff for Bethesda. I bet that if you're listening out there, you know, I'd like the, the rights to that. It makes total sense, which is, and everybody'd love it, which is exactly the reason why they won't do it. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to move on to the next question, is, and this is for both of you. Um, what Fallout games have you played? All of them, including Van Buren, although it wasn't finished. Yeah, I got it, my hands on a copy, every single one. I have played all of them except Shelter and Van Buren because it wasn't released. But I have not played any Fallout Shelter. Don't shoot me. And Vic's okay. right. Van Buren was not released. I was very lucky to get my hands on that. And uh, is that a mod quest? What's that? Van Buren, is that a mod quest or is that an No, that, that was supposed to be the original Fallout 3 by Obsidian, a.k.a. the guys from Interplay. Uh, that's a long story, but uh, basically after Fallout 2, they started making Fallout Fallout 3. It was codenamed Van Buren, and what was it? Vic at chat helped me out. They had financial trouble and ended up selling the franchise to Bethesda, and we got the Fallout 3 that you saw. That's exactly what, what it was. Is, is Bethesda said, we're going to take the lore, we're going to take the IP, but we don't want anything that you guys were working on. We're going to make our own game. The benefit to you guys in chat and everybody is that these guys were allowed to do fallout new vegas and used a lot of the van buren content that so so basically you got a better game Interesting. now the, the now uh, you know that maybe we'll get into that in a little bit the 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 difference between fallout 3 and new vegas and fallout 4 and because i do want to touch on that in a little bit but this may not be the best point for that Right on. All I'm saying is that they had all this content from Van Buren that they could bring into New Vegas, so they had a lot of stuff already that they could work with story-wise and all that to, to help New Vegas be a better game. Hmm. That's yeah. correct, Fall Girl. That's correct.
uh, can, should I go first this time? Or? Go ahead. Uh, I would completely revamp the fast travel system. I'd make it more like teleportation. You'd have to have a science tree in order to access it at the very beginning. It, it would take fuel, you know, resources in order to do. So you'd have to build a transport platform. And the farther away you transport, the uh, the more energy it takes. If you go from pad to pad, it takes a little less. If you go from site to site with, you know, one transport from no pad to another, that would take the most amount. And that you'd have to, in order to improve all this, you'd have to build your way up a, a per tree. I love that, Mark. <laughs> uh, I just want to interrupt everybody. Uh... I want everybody to say hi to my boss, Talia. Hi, hi Talia. She's in hi, there. Talia. Hey, Talia. <laughs> yeah, this is why Mikey's not at work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Vic, how would you do it? Um, I would bring back some of the wonder of Fallout. And this is going to touch on the difference between Fallout 3, New Vegas, and 4. Uh, I love the idea of an open open world game and that was lost between fallout 3 and fallout new vegas and then continued with fallout 4 not as bad as new vegas fallout 4 but but bethesda kind of leaned much heavier toward the new vegas style of of world design and storytelling and I would absolutely bring back the, when you walk out of the initial location, whether it's a vault or whatever the case may be, the world is literally open to you. And some of the best stuff that you will ever find in the game is nowhere near the main quest line. So something that makes you actually discover the world. like the Yes, world because there was, a, there was a perk. Yeah, it was the explorer perk, right? And you wanted to go out explore so i mean i first played because be, my first fallout game that i ever played was fallout 3 i went since then went back and played one and two but i was hoping for the same style in new vegas and that is not what we got new vegas is very linear and while the main quest line covers about 70 percent of the map the other 30 percent is total garbage. There is almost nothing of note or value outside 30 meters off of the main quest line. Whereas some of the best standalone quests in Fallout 3 were nowhere near the main quest line. And they were on opposite corners of the map. And I love that sense of wonder. And I would absolutely incorporate Mark's uh, teleportation, uh, you know, fast travel uh, in that. And of course, with, with an updated engine that made me want to go out and just look around at all the things that were on the map. Well, I don't think I have to tell you I agree with Vic here as well. Yeah, uh, guys, right. I'll be right back. I'm gonna I'm gonna check on Annie real quick. So, uh, two minutes. Absolutely. Okay. No and, and you know what? I will continue on my my conversation here about Fallout Three. How's that? Cool. Sure. Thanks, um, guys. And Thanks matter of fact. Okay, and you can literally head any direction when you walk out. Now, of course, they direct you toward Megaton because it's right in your line of sight. But if you don't want to go to Megaton, you could hang a right. You could hang a left. You could go anywhere that you wanted to go in Fallout 3 at level 1. All right. Literally head any direction when you walk out. Now, of course, they no sound yet on YouTube. Megaton, that makes sense. It right could take a couple seconds. Sight. But if you don't want to go to Megaton, you could hang a right. You could hang a left. Can anybody hear you could Gary? Go anywhere that you wanted to go. Gary, we're looking for three. Gary. Can we hear a Gary? Yeah, 
All right. Really head any direction when you walk out. Now, Mr. Course, Strong you know, get on here. YouTube. Make yeah, it that makes sense. It right could take a couple seconds. Sight. But there's an there echo. Want to go to Megaton? You could. Have no, I'm not hearing an echo on my end, and I have I have Gary's live stream muted because I am. Kevin can still not hear you. Uh oh. All right. Now, uh, is that better? Can you guys hear me now? I'm talking over myself. Wow, that's fucking amazing. I didn't know I could actually do that. I'm going to have to put that down on my, my resume. I talk over myself. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, the one thing that I was saying about New Vegas in particular, before you ever start the game, you know about every single faction in the game. You know where everyone is. You, you know about the Legion, you know about the NCR, because it's all laid out in a video before you ever get to play the game. Is Apologies, it? I'm back. Welcome back. Welcome back. And, and Welcome back, that, takes, that takes some of that wonder out, especially on a first playthrough. You know, it, it, when, it, when you leave the vault in Fallout 3, you don't know, the very first time, you don't know what you're going to expect out there. But when you when you finally get control of your character in Fallout New Vegas, you know who all the factions are. You know what you need to do. Yeah, I think that I think Fallout Three, as far as a uh, lore and story and the way they just organized it in general, uh, that that's a tough act to follow. But it's not hard to do. Just don't preload the game with every bit of information that we need to know. Oh, you're right. I agree. Uh, yeah. That's the likes to do that. Uh, this is a little bit of a spinoff of what Vic's saying, but uh, the minute Todd Howard, 2016 E3, said, we even generate a baby based on what your character looks like, about five seconds after that, I was like, okay, Sean's the leader of the Institute. He's older than us, and that's significant. Right. <laughs> about five seconds after he said that. Hmm. Good point. Good point. So, um, I wanted to make sure I got kind of my thoughts on what I would um, put into a Fallout game. For me, it's some form of a vehicle travel. Um, it just fl floors me that I can understand why you wouldn't want to have a flying saucer, as Vic has demonstrated a few <laughs> times in his streams, um, both on purpose and by accident. But, you know, something like the Lone Wanderer motorcycle, you know, you have some saddlebags and you can, you know, put shit in it. Uh, Fallout 2, you had a vehicle that you could drive. Now, granted, you didn't drive it, but that was your form of fast travel, right? You get in the car, and if I can't remember, um, it's been such a long time, and I haven't gotten to Fallout 2 yet, but I can't remember if there was, um, you could store stuff in the trunk or whatever, but, you know, that aspect of, like, I could drive the Lone Wanderer or, you know, one of those small little bubble cars or something and, like, park it in front of, say, um, Mass Fusion and go inside and, you know, go through that dungeon and everything, come out, and if I'm encumbered, great, no problem, I just put the shit in the, in the you know, sidecar or whatever and off I go, I'm, you know, no longer encumbered, I can run around like that. I think that would be, you know, that would be something, because it wouldn't have to go, like, super fast. But, you know, maybe 50% faster than what you run or something like that. You know, I just think that would be kind of cool. Um, I'm actually going to have to add on a little bit to that, uh, Gary, because I like that idea of the uh, of vehicle. And, and, of course, you know, <clears throat> Kevin said it best in, you know, riding the rad stack. A lot of post-apocalyptic movies that I've seen, they reverted back to horses. Why not ride an animal across the wasteland? Right, make exactly. A, that makes perfect sense. You make a good point. It reminds me of this old proverb. I can't remember who said it, but uh, someone said, uh, I don't know how World War III will be fought, but I know how World War IV will be fought with sticks and stones. Right, right. exactly. <laughs> Definitely, very, that's very a good true. One. 
Now, one other thing that I would love to, to, to bring back, uh, just real quickly, and I'm going to go back to Fallout 3 and how it differs from New Vegas and 4, is truly random enemy generation. Because that is something that Fallout 4 followed directly in line with, with New Vegas. In Fallout 3, you could run into a Deathclaw one time, and in that same spot the next time, it could be a pack of ghouls. Or there could be nothing there. Yeah. Or you run into that pack later down the road. Or a random and encounter. they follow you all over the damn place. Yeah, or a random encounter. Right, exactly. Now... In New Vegas, when you hang the right out of Good Springs and you're heading toward the NCR outpost, the ants in the desert basin there are always going to be there. They're always going to be the same type. They're always going to be the same size. There's always going to be the same number. And Fallout 4 falls into that same trap. Now, it may be a regular Death Claw or an albino Death Claw or, or some variation in Fallout 4, depending on your level, but there's always going to be a Death Claw there. And, and uh, again, when I know where every enemy is going to spawn and have a pretty good idea as to what they are, that's how you can get to Nuka World on level one. That's how you can get to Far Harbor on level one. Because you know where every single enemy is going to spawn. Right. That you takes gotta, a lot of the wonder out of the game for me. You got to wonder how they... Why they stepped away from the things that made it work so well. Let me let me give you an example here that's along the lines of what Vic's saying is uh, when they first announced Fallout 4, I was so psyched for what we might get subterranean. Uh, Bethesda coming off Skyrim in the gorgeously vast and beautiful underground areas we got in Skyrim. And also in Fallout 3, just a maze of the red lines and blue line subways, all this stuff underground. I was thinking, okay, Bethesda learned from Fallout 3, and they certainly blew it up. They blew it up in Skyrim, just beautiful stuff underground. I cannot wait to see what they're going to do in Fallout 4. And then just... <laughs> so, yeah, why do, they, why do they back up from the stuff that's successful, I guess? You know, that's, that's a, a great question. If you Actually, if you want to follow the history of, of video games that have sequels, no one's really done that. Take what works... And just improve on it. Thanks, improve Street. the graphics. You know, a really great example. Um, nice drawing. Uh, James Bond, Goldeneye, won so many awards. Won won the best game of the year. It was a fantastic game. They remade I, it. It sucked. I didn't even know they remade it. I mean, I played oh, yeah. the crap out of the original, but. It was horrible. They tried doing the same, some of the same um, uh, levels that for the multiplayer, and they added shit that just didn't need to be added. It was it was horrible. They are another good example: Star Wars games. Oh, How God. many times have they tried to improve Star Wars games and just epic fail after fail after fail? I kind of gave up after uh, Jedi Knight. With Jedi Knight being, I thought it was a pretty damn good game. But you want to wind the clocks back to, like, say, uh, Dark Forces or X-Wing or TIE Fighter? Loved them. Ace Combat. How many, uh, is there any flyers out there who like Ace Combat? Yeah, I played it. I they, liked it. You know, it was a great game. And then they made Ace Combat 2. Suck. You know, I, I, I've not found a company yet that just has a, a good product and then when they go to make a sequel just hey why fix what's not broken bioshock i'll give you an example of a success story there good point all, all three of them are fantastic but but that does not make you wrong mike but 99 percent, you're right dead space love there those oh uh, great yeah we're gonna be talking about i think that a little later um, mario one two and three mario world <laughs> Let's see, you know, I don't know. I, I think I think Mario, um, to me, jumped the shark after uh, they started making the 3D world. And What'd you think of Dark Forces, you know? Stronium? What'd you think of Dark Forces? I loved it, personally. Now, now Mikey, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you something just because I'm an old man and I know better. <laughs> <laughs> the term jump the shark, everyone uses that wrong. 
And you just used it incorrectly as well. I did. <laughs> Some of the most well-known Happy Days episodes were after the shark episode. Had the highest number of viewership after the shark episode. Yet everyone saw that shark episode as the turning point for Happy Days, yet they went for like another six seasons after that. Sure. But for some weird reason, so, people still use that phrase, jumping the shark, like it's a bad thing, when it wasn't a bad thing during the Happy Days years. So what, would, what term would you use then? Screwed the pooch. <laughs> <laughs> Which everybody knows when you screwed the pooch, you've done it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We got a lot of questions here, so I'm going to just uh, move it along to the uh, next subject, the one that's been on everybody's tongue, the one that everybody's been speculating, hyping about, hoping, praying. Yeah, I can hear Mark <laughs> digging for his own questions, too. <laughs> uh, so we're going to start talking about 76. Okay. Uh, now, Vic, you've put out so much content, and I am so grateful for the content that you put out. Um, uh, no clip has put out some stuff. Um, what are you guys looking forward to for seventy six, and kind of, and what are you kind of like meh about? Go ahead, Mark. Uh, you know, I mean, the 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 first thing with Fallout seventy six, I think we got to talk about is uh, is the community and how polarized it is. I know I'm not directly answering your question, but. Uh, when it comes to Fallout 76, I think the word, when you're asking good stuff and mess stuff, I think the good, I, I think the word is dichotomy. To be honest with you, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like a bikini, I guess. It it reveals a lot, and and what it reveals is interesting, but what it doesn't reveal is generally more interesting. So, what am I looking for? It's hard to answer that question, to be honest with you, because, you know, Todd Howard and Pete Hines have kind of contradicted each other several times. And they're telling us what's in the game, but they're not telling us really how it works. You know, the new, they're not giving us nuance. And I'm, I know they're still tweaking it, but... Yeah. Uh, I mean, at this point, anything could be good. And anything could be meh. So, I mean, that's a tough one. Maybe Vic can do a better job with it. Oh, let me put it this way before we go to you, Vic, because um, I know you have some really good opinions on this. Um, what have they shown so far that you're like, all right, yeah. And what have they shown where you're like, you know, fuck that. Why'd you do that? Um, well, there isn't anything that they've shown, really, that's just, F that, you know, screw it. Why'd you do that? Except for, uh, and I never thought I'd be the one to say I don't like dedicated servers, but that, you know, in my opinion, kicks the third-party modding community in the teeth. So, I mean, that is an F that for me. Uh, what did I like? I, I like the idea of playing with friends. I mean, I do. Yeah, and I love this. I love people out there, oh, I, I want to play single player. I want to play single player. I want to play. And then and then they they have mods, and they have like like seven different companions at the same time. And it's like, or, or they're running with a companion. You know, I mean, but I want to play single player. But I'm going to run with Kiri, or I'm going to run with Strong, or whoever. Well, hey, you know, well, you're playing multiplayer. You get to play with a friend that's probably going to make better decisions than an NPC. It's going to manage their own damn inventory, you know, and it's going to at least shoot a little bit straighter. So, I mean, look at it that mm -hmm. way, and multiplayer is not so bad. So the, I and think that's cool. Most likely not jump in front of you while you're trying to shoot somebody. There you go. So yeah. I think that's pretty cool if you think about it like that. But that's the reason why I said dichotomy. Depending on how you look at it from one side or the other, it's horrible or it's it's through a glass darkly. Very yep. interesting. Yep. I, like I, I love hanging out with you happy assholes. <laughs> and I, and I want to and I want to do it in the Fallout universe. I I said it in Fallout Four when when I first started doing YouTube videos. I was like, God, I wish you guys could just just come walk around the settlement or come take a look at this this cool building that I built. You know how awesome would it be if we had a you know a multiplayer aspect to Fallout Four. Little did we know that they were already making it, you know, but how cool would it be to be able to share that with your friend? 
and that is something that I am really, really, really looking forward to. Are there things that I, again, dedicated servers? Yeah, I'm not too stoked about that. But when I remember when Fallout 4 came out, they said, we are doing mods on consoles. Todd Howard said that. And everyone went, yeah, bullshit. The, 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 the PC Master Race guys were like, yeah, you guys will never have any decent mods. And everyone else was like, no, there's no way they're going to get mods onto consoles. But you know what? Todd Howard said it, and then it happened. So when Todd Howard stands on stage at E3, he says, we are going to have private servers. We are going to have mods for Fallout 76. At this point, I got to believe him. Am I hoping for something, you know, am I hoping for it? Yes. But at the same time, if they have any inkling that they can get it to work, then they're going to try to get it to work. And think about it. It took, what, four months to get official mod support on PC. Now, granted, you guys had Nexus mods. All the PC players had Nexus mods day one. Yeah, we had day one mods. But... For those people that don't want to venture into Nexus mods, they're scared of, of doing, you know, uh, making sure that it's in the right place and all that stuff. Well, you know what? Bethesda ha came up with a solution for that on Bethesda.net that you could go download PC mods for your PC game. And that's and, something I'm... Oh, go, go ahead, Vic. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to say. So... And, and they, I've heard Pete say it. I've heard Todd say it. It's in the pipeline. And I get that it's not going to be day one. Day one, they're, as, as a developer, they want to make sure that their servers don't crash on day one. That is their number one concern. I agree with that. Uh, what I was going to bring up is regulation. Uh, who out there knows what the mod CCBE is? Oh, yeah, I do. Okay, but, do you really think even with private servers, paid servers, Bethesda is going to allow us to use that? No, no. No, Nexus Mods is dead for Fallout 76. Yeah, and that's, <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the old fuck that for me to answer that part of the question. But if it's being hosted on Bethesda servers... You're not even going to be able to get a copyrighted stuff like hey what if i want to run around with a hello kitty sledgehammer that's sure. not going on private service because it's copyrighted material bethesda won't do that so the regulation's still there but um on the other side uh vic i i agree with everything you're saying i do i just want to throw that regulation thing in there no and i and i get it is it going to be as expansive as fallout 4 or skyrim with mods no but are more people going to be able to play with mods? Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to actually. I'm going to uh, tell you the whole uh, go. We're going to talk about mods on this in, in, in a minute, because um, uh, yeah, that's one of the questions that I have a little further on. So I'm going to let Gary. I'm going to stop you there, so we don't dive deeper into it. Kind of kibosh that question. Uh, I'm going to let Gary go into this next one. Um, and then we'll we'll go back to the mods in a little bit. Yeah, so we'll, we'll take it back to something a little bit more boring and not so in depth. <laughs> so <laughs> now my um, butt again. <laughs> what was what was your first thoughts when you realized there was going to be a new Fallout game? I was, I, I was surprised. I I didn't see it coming, and I remember I think. Damn, Vic, what, I was in your stream uh, watching E3 with you guys. Yeah. And I remember saying to, to somebody in the stream, I didn't, I didn't see Fallout. I didn't see this coming. But you know what? I had a chance to think about it. And I, you know, we should have with that lawsuit that Bethesda had over the, the multiplayer thing years ago. I, I don't know the details. Uh, but over the Fallout name and, and how somebody wanted to do a multiplayer. We, and, and then there was that scare again, a few years ago, where there was a rumor going around online that uh, the next Fallout was going to be multiplayer, like ESO. And and then it just kind of got buried. So, maybe we should have known. I believe my exact phrase, and it's very short, was, holy shit. 
(laughs) (laughs) Surprise was an understatement. And I agree with Mark. We we should have absolutely known. But honestly, the whole Starfield thing was throwing everybody off. And that's why I think that's why we didn't think we were going to be seeing another Fallout game. Because all anyone talked about is what's Starfield going to be? You know what? Starfield, Starfield, Starfield. It filled up that gap before E3. So no one was thinking Fallout. Yeah. You're right. I mean, for me, the, I wasn't thinking Fallout because, and we've had many times we've had this discussion, you know, um, you know, everybody's like, oh, we need another Fallout game. It'd be another year or two, blah, blah. And it's like, no, we're not going to get it. And, you know, Fallout 5 is not coming out for like eight to 10 years. They got to do a new engine and, you know, all this kind of stuff. We were right saying Fallout 5 is not going to be out for, you know, quite some time still. But doesn't mean you're not going to get a new Fallout game. So it kind of surprised the crap out of me. Um, the one thing I will say about, you know, the multiplayer, you know, with the ESO and all that kind of stuff. The good news is ESO wasn't, wasn't, isn't ran by Bethesda Game Studios. You know, it's, it's ran by a subsidiary or whatever. Um, you know, whereas this is more or less developed and, and kind of ran by Bethesda, um, you know, you know, to include the, uh, the group down there in, in Houston and whatnot, but it's more in line with Bethesda game studios than, than what ESO is. So that's a good thing. Well, yeah, I agree with that. Oh, me too. The, the big question that I had coming into this, because, you know, living here in Texas, I knew that Bethesda was buying Battlecry Studios. I knew what Battlecry Studios was doing before Bethesda was, was before the talks, you know, had came out because I knew that Battle Battlecry was supposed to be an online game. And it really kind of threw me for a loop when I heard that that Bethesda Game Studios, not parent Bethesda or Zenimax, but BSG or BGS was buying Battle cry, I was like, what are they doing? They're buying a studio. Now, granted, we've learned a lot more about the guys at Battle Cry. The developers down there, those guys have been around, have been doing online games for a long time. We're talking Ultima Online here. Hello? Did you guys know that Ultima Online is still running? Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing, too. I mean, what is it, 14 years, something like that? I think, it, I think it's 15, but I, yeah, right. it's, it's, it's a, a long, long time. Most, most people don't have cars that old, man. Right. Well, I don't. <laughs> you know? <laughs> either. And, but, but these guys got some serious chops. So then when I heard that, that essentially BGS Austin, which used to be Battlecry, is the primary studio for this, this actually gives me a lot of hope for Bethesda for the future. And here's why. If they can work in, maybe not so much Fallout 76, but if you could bring in two to four people into some sort of multiplayer aspect, I think that that would be the perfect mix for a Fallout game. Hey, Shell. How you doing, brother? How you doing, Hey, Shell. Um, And I just have to give a tip of the hat. And, uh, you know, a small little clap to the guys down at, uh, at the former Battlecry. Um, they took an engine, because I've looked through the creation engine. You know, as a modder, you know, you get pretty deep into that thing. And bravo to those guys and to id Software. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Um, I, I confess ignorance when it comes to Battlecry Studios. Uh, the most I really heard about them was uh, E3 2016. Uh, but when Bethesda went down there to Texas and, and talked to id Studios and they started working on multiplayer in the creation engine, that's most primarily what gave me hope. All right. Those, those well, boys at id know what they're doing. Well, yeah. Look at QuakeCon. Uh, right. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you guys are going to be walking over some of our questions if we just let's keep going. <laughs> so <laughs> let's move that's on. That's how we roll. You know? Yeah, I know. I'm not. Well, no, sorry. Mark's not this rolling is, anymore. Sorry, just, Mark, Mark's now caning. Yeah, this is yeah. more just bullshit session, not so much interview session. <laughs> That's awesome. 
All right, so my next question, and we've kind of covered this um, a little bit, I, you know, like I said, walking over the questions. Uh, what is your opinion of microtransactions in 76? Which, like I said, we kind of covered it, but I know we've got some new people in the chat, so we'll, we can kind of rehash it a little bit. Your turn, Vic. I, I'm for it. I'm for it as long as it's not pay to win. Don't give me an OP weapon. Don't give me OP armor. Right. If you want to give me a new skin... I'm totally fine with it. If you want to give me some more building stuff, I'm totally fine with it. Because I spent... Now, I lucked out, and I bought the season pass for Fallout 4 before the price went up to 50 bucks. I would have paid 50 bucks for all of the DLC content that we got. Because we got, we got some great storylines. Just thinking of the whole Far Harbor storyline, that was well worth it. Nuka Cola, well worth it. Even though I didn't want to be a raider, it was fun to take a character and just do the raider thing and see Preston Garvey get pissed off. Even though that's not my play style, I still did it once on a playthrough. Just to experience it. If they're offering DLC content and, and regular updates for free, because that is the word, then I am okay with microtransactions as long as it's not pay to win. I agree. Well, uh, I agree with Vic here too, especially especially on his point of pay to win. I mean, if that happens, and and I don't believe for one second that it's going to, but if that happened, game over. Uh, number two, if I if I gave my honest answer here, uh, Gary's channel would probably be banned by YouTube. So, uh, <laughs> so let me just uh, let me just reiterate the fact that I am I am extraordinarily concerned about the direction the creation club with my microtransaction is taking the gaming industry and the communities and games themselves. Um, I'm not, I'm not worried about what's going on. In 76. I agree with everything that, that Vic says, especially if microtransactions are going to go to support continued free content. And also we have a choice whether to, you know, play along or not. So I agree with Vic, but I'll never stop being concerned with the direction that this is taking us in gaming. Yeah. I mean, but, and the, the thing, the way I look at it is, anybody that's played any kind of MMOs or anything like that, um, you know, you guys have been subject to microtransactions for a long time. You know, um, I, the only one I've ever played was, um, and everybody that's talked to me for more than about five minutes about my gaming habits, you, you'll know that. I played uh, Star Wars: The Old Republic, which is an online MMO from e or uh, EA or uh, BioWare. Um, and after they went free to play, they instantly brought in the microtransactions. And at least the thing that they at least did was made it so most of it was all vanity stuff you know i like to call it vanity stuff because it just changes the way you look or you know in that you have um you know you have these speeder bikes or whatever and you can have different mounts that you could purchase and stuff like that or actually you mean like well you could purchase some of it directly yeah. but there's only a handful of things that was close to being um pay to pay to win which was you ha if you were free to play you would have to buy basically passes to go do some of the dungeons and and uh, some of the um you know end of the games type stuff you know you could See, play I'm not with up that. to the main storyline but once you got to the end you couldn't do all the other stuff i'm and, not with that and i'm not with stuff like say paying for playstation plus look at uh, uh like uh my nephew wants to play rocket league with me but he only has a ps4 and uh, my brother-in-law said he had a spare PS4 for me. And I said, hey, yeah, I'll play Rocket League with you guys. As long as I don't have to pay that for that monthly PlayStation Premium. Oh, wait, you can't play online without paying for the service. And right, no, right. no. And uh, real quick, uh, Shell asked a question. What do we think of, uh, he said Fallout Florida, but I'm pretty, he asked a, us a question, Vic. Uh, probably Gary and Mike, oh, too. Oh, the Fallout Miami. Yeah, what do, what do we think of Fallout Miami? And and to keep my answer really short here, Shell, I think Fallout Miami completely upstaged uh, Fallout 76. It, it's it's a hotter title. It's it's gotten more the trailer's gotten more views than the 76 trailer. At least I heard that. Um, there's there there are a lot of excited people out there, but it's a long way from being done. 
Well, here's the biggest issue that I have with with Fallout Miami. It's going to be PC only. And it's playing to the minority of, of the players of the Fallout games. Well, yeah, you're right about that. But but the, minor, the minority is more hardware finance kind of thing. Like, uh, you know, I mean, more people play on consoles because uh, than PCs because more people have consoles than gaming PCs, just like phones. You know, more people have play games on phones than they do consoles or PCs because more people have phones. And that could go into the reason why uh, uh, Fallout Shelter is Bethesda's most played game. So it's just, it's quantity and, you know, what you're willing to spend. As far as, as far as Miami, you know, being PC only, I, the modders can't help that, of course. So I, I, I can't fault them or anything like that. No, no, no. I'm no, don't get me wrong. I am not faulting them. I know that that even if I blew out every mod that I have, that that thing's going to be bigger than two gig. It it flat out wouldn't run on a console anyway. Mm-hmm. But it's also reaching a very limited, you know, target group, and and that's that's where I I think it's beautiful. I think it's gorgeous. I would love to play it, but the problem is is that. They're they're doing all of this for the smallest piece of the pie, and and that's unfortunate. Not not that it's a bad thing; it's just unfortunate that it can't reach out. I'd love, like I said, I'd love to play it, but you know what? My my laptop barely runs the Creation Kit, and it runs Fallout Four in windowed mode. You know, so I'm not. I can't even download it for my PC. Yeah, one thing one thing I can guess, and you're right, Vic, you're right. But if I could guess, you know, I mean, if these creators could get this mod out to consoles, if 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 it was within their power to do so, I'm sure they would. Yeah, well, some, I'm, I'm, I'm some sure would. Sony would some find would a way not. to fuck it up for them. <laughs> yeah, Sony would uh, definitely fuck it up for them. It'd have to go I through wanna, the Creation Club, is the thing. I'm gonna um, reverse it a little bit. Uh, I did ask this on my our last uh, show, and I'm gonna ask. Your guys' opinion. Do you actually think that 76... Or what do you think about 76? Do you think it's like a test for the new Fallout? Or do you think it's a filler like how uh, Shelter was for the new Fallout to come out? Um, do you... You know, what, what's your opinion on that? I think it's I think it's a spinoff uh, to mostly... Is my mic working? Yeah, okay, sorry. Yep. Yeah, I think it's a spinoff mostly to uh, test microtransactions. I hope it's great. I hope it's a great game, but I, I think it's a spin-off to test multiplayer functionality and then determine whether or not down the road if if uh, you know Starfield or the next fall are going to be single player because there's been some kind of interesting back and forth dialogue and interviews with that. I okay. think that Fallout 76 was Todd Howard trying to figure out what the hell he was going to do with Battlecry Studios. Was he going to have to get rid of half the staff and bring in people, you know, that so that they could make a solid ecosystem between three studios that are, you know, in two different countries, <laughs> you know, and because we all know that they that Battle Cry actually started working on Fallout seventy six before they became Bethesda Game Studios Austin. They were working on this before they were purchased. Yeah, that's true. And I think that Todd said, you guys tell me if we can do multiplayer with the creation engine. And when they started diving into an engine that very long in the tooth, in the gaming world anyway, I mean, this thing had been powering, what, Morrowind? Yeah, (laughs) if not before. Right, you know, so, and if you guys haven't seen the no clip documentary of the making of Fallout 76, I encourage everyone that's watching, if you haven't seen that documentary, go watch it. There yeah, is definitely. so much incredible information in there. Just listen to the developers talk about how they're going in, and they literally had to break apart the creation engine. And yeah, well, that and, and while they were out doing what, it, oh, sorry. What, well, well, they just had to figure out what they could do with it. Right. And while they were doing that, they found code for Morrowind. Right. That hadn't been used since Morrowind. 
but it was still in there. So at the very least, we're going to be running a much cleaner game in Fallout 76. That engine is going to be much more optimized. I had a note on the game engine. During E3, Todd Howard mentioned that, uh, what, uh, they can do 16 more times of this and that. I I can't find the, the note that I have on it, but when... Uh, the improved graphics and all the rest that he mentioned. Right, the lighting and all of that. Yeah, uh, but when I'm watching the demo, when I'm watching the in-game footage, one thing that jumped out at me is I don't, I don't see any of that. You know, uh, okay, that that sounds great, Todd, when you say so, but where is it? I don't see it in any footage. Well, actually, you do. You 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 see it when you see the rain in the valley and they're standing up on the hill. You see the dynamic weather being generated a lot further out. Okay, well, yeah. You know, imagine in Fallout 4 if you could see the rad storm coming. That's you don't. It just, it, it just, it just materializes around starts, you. Yeah, it just starts <laughs> you know? and it starts going crazy. And Kevin, yeah. uh, just to Kevin's comment real quick. Kevin, this will be Fallout 76 is the last game that we will see in this current iteration of the creation engine. Uh, Starfield, which is the next title, which is already at a working level. I think we're going to see Starfield next year, but that's just me. Um, that's me and my wild speculation again. Um, it is based on the new engine, and that is, I think, what Montreal has been working on. I say Bethesda uh, announces next E3 2019 that it'll be out that year. Starfield. Yep. Yeah, Starfield will, will be holiday 2019 title. That'd be cool. All right. Because, uh, all right, because well, we, we've got some discussion on some of that stuff. Okay. Too, so, yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> you know, don't want to like, step on any question, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is why I really, I really wanted you guys on this show is because, Vic, your knowledge is incredible. And, 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 the intelligence that Marx brings to the conversation is almost it's almost like we don't even have to have questions. We can just let you guys talk. Yeah. And and it will cover everything that we've already written down. So, okay, we're gonna have uh <laughs> Mark and Vic have a conversation. We'll come back in a few hours and check see how they are. Everybody enjoy the talk. <laughs> Later. Hey, and, and this is the first time that Mark and I have actually spoken voice to voice. Yes, it, it is, it is. <laughs> and it's been fun. Oh, I'm yeah. glad we can make history here. Yeah, there you go. Um, actually, Gary, I'm going to go with my next one, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, how do you think the mods are going to work with 76 being online servers? Okay, well, there's two ways. There's two things to, to consider here. Um, let's go from a third-party mod perspective real quick. Let's say I wanted to have a Hello Kitty sledgehammer. Am I going to be able to... Go to the Nexus, get that mod, and hey, I'll see the hammer as a Hello Kitty sledgehammer or or whatever. But everybody else will just see a regular sledgehammer because they don't have the mod. That's a question. Will that work? And I think I think that will. the The rest of it's going to be pumped through the Creation Club. You know, I mean, and all those mods are going to go onto the server, so everybody's going to have access to them. And so the official mods, the answer is easy. They'll all go onto the servers, and you can get them or buy them or or whatever. The other the other side of it is the third-party mods that you might be able to see and use, but nobody else will. Well, and, I don't know about that. I mean, um, sorry, Vic. No, it's all right. Go ahead. I, I'm going to perf- put a, a perfectly good example of, uh, well, I guess that really isn't a good example. I was going to say Call of Duty. Um, there are special outfits and um, stuff you can buy. Uh, so, like, microtransactions, and I consider microtransactions the same as mods, okay? They're just in-company mods. Um, I've seen characters wear outfits that I don't have and can't see in my menu, but I see them having it. Well, they have they, they have to have the textures done, and you're talking about mo- paid mods. You're, t- you're talking about that kind of support. You're not talking about free mods, you know, third-party sure. mods. Do you think there are going to be third-party mods? Absolutely, without a doubt, on day one. I know um, um, Todd Howard, he said that he wants to be able to have mods. And when I believe, and this is my opinion, 
I believe when he says mods, he's not talking about something that Bethesda is sponsoring or anything like that. You know, nothing through Creation Club or, you know, any of that kind of stuff. What he's talking about is third party, um, whether it's through the Nexus or, um, you know, that you get off a uh, Bethesda net, you know, whatever. But that they would like to make it so if I got a mod, then it works for me. Not maybe not everybody has to have it in order for them to see it, you know, and whatever, you know, still experience it type of thing. So how that would end up working out, I have no idea. But didn't they say it was like six months or something before they were planning on having mod support anyway? I don't think that they gave us a specific timetable for it. Yeah. I think they just want it working. They want the game working before they... Uh, I'm sure they have a team that is working on mods. You know, how do we get mods onto servers right now? They have a team that's doing it. That but makes sense. I think once... One, oh, it totally makes sense. Once the game is launched, I think they'll, they'll balloon that team up to, to make sure that mods can work. And then it will all shift over to Austin to maintain the servers. Yeah, I think that's I, ultimately how it's, it's going to go. I completely agree with Vic here. It makes sense. Uh, right now, their concerns aren't mods. Right now, their concerns are getting the game to run smoothly, which I think they've knocked out by and large, bearing in mind how late the demo's coming out, you know, October, the month before. So what I think is that what they're really working on right now are balance issues. Well, I mean, if you watch some of the interviews that they... Uh that they've had with Todd and, uh, cut, you know, strike me down because I can't think of the guy's name. The other, Pete, uh, uncle Pete. Yeah. yeah. Uncle Pete. Um, they've been playing this game for a while now. Just the devs. They've been playing the game for a while. So they had to have perfected it to a certain point. And I think they can't perfect it anymore until they get the servers running. And, see how it handles with the 13, 24 people in each server while running multiple. I mean, they're going to have to have hundreds of servers. Oh, yeah. Thousand. You know, um, so, I mean, it, it, it'll be more, I, the game's mostly done, I think, but not fully done. And that's yes. where we come in. I think they're tweaking it. Basically, they're tweaking it. So let me, let me go back real quick. I think that PC players will have day one PC-only mods from Nexus Mods. Okay, yeah. that's a given. And it'll, it'll be exactly like Mark described it. Only that player will be able to see that mod, the, the, the whole you know Hello Kitty sledgehammer. Only that player will be able to see the Hello Kitty sledgehammer. Everyone else just sees a sledgehammer. I think for consoles... We're going to get two things going here. We're going to have our creation club, right? We're going to have the paid mods. And then we will also have the unpaid mods that is Bethesda.net. Except we won't download them onto our consoles anymore. We will see mods when we see private server. So everyone's going to say, let's go over to Draco's server because he's running this mod, this mod, and this mod. It's going to be a drop-down list. It's going to be something that I select. And it, since the mods live on the servers anyway, you will, you will know when you go to get into that private server, these are the mods, these are the things that you will see running in this game, on this server. Nothing will be local as far as mods go for consoles with 76. That hey, is Liz. my belief. Hey, Liz. How you doing? Hey, Liz. I, I think it's going to be putting check marks in boxes when you're setting up your private server. These are the mods I want to run on my server. I think you, that makes absolute sense, Vic. Absolute sense right there. And if it's not, then they're stupid. That's how it should be. <laughs> <laughs> um. Gary, uh, now the my fourth question it kind of runs with the third, but if you want to go with yours, go right ahead, and I can reverse it a little bit. Yeah, I'll I'll go ahead and throw mine out there. Um, what do you think the ratio of solo quests to group quests will be? Because I, I feel like there's going to be, I feel like there's going to be different quests. You're going to have the solo quest that you can play, which is the solo game. You know that 
everybody wants to be able to play or they're used to playing. But then there's going to be certain things that you're going to be doing with your friends. I don't think that there will be yeah, any multiplayer the, quests. The ratio is zero. You'll yeah. be able to do everything solo or everything with two people or three people or four people or eight people. Well, I have, I have a, I have, I have a scenario that, from what they've said, I, I know for a fact there's at least one solo quest that's launching the the thing, launching the the nuke. You have to have multiple people to be able to get in there and get through that so you can launch the nuke. Yeah, but multiple people. They've can, already said that. They can find the codes and then just all give no, them to you. No, no, so you have. To, it takes like four people just to get through the dungeon oh. where you can launch the, the launch the thing. They've essentially said that. Okay, all right. Yeah, but who has said that? Because in every so interview, it was either that Todd I've Howard or, or, or uh, Pete Hines has, has said that, or it was one of the devs on one of the interviews that I saw. They were saying, "Yeah, so you know." you are going to have to have people with you so you can get through these dungeons. Is it possible to link that? I I I don't even know where it's at. If I oh, can find, oh. if I can find it I'll 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 throw it out there for everybody to to check it out. That be appreciated. If I find it I'll put it in yeah, the, I'll absolutely. put it in the description of the stream after the fact and I'll throw a message in Discord and and uh anybody's videos that I watch or whatever let you know that it's out there. Yeah. Because trust me, I hate that I have to go to Reddit to read a a German or or a right. Finnish you know yeah. interview that's yeah. been translated. You know, yeah, uh, it, the wall. it was a short little snippet. It was only about five ten seconds, and I don't remember where it was or whatever. But I was just like, okay, well that's interesting. You know, that's that's kind of one of those things that that's to me it was significant. You know. And the, the the reason why I'm leaning is when Pete says, when Uncle Pete said, I love playing a solo game. Even even in 76, I run solo. And there's nothing I can't do in the game. I think it's going to be like Borderlands yeah, I remember 2. That. You know, I mean, I think it's going to be a lot like Borderlands 2 where you can do things solo, but uh, it, things get a lot easier when you have help. Like... Uh, you could beat the bosses in Borderlands 2 by yourself, but it was a tremendous pain in the ass. It was a lot easier if you played multiplayer, and I think that's really how they geared the game. So, again, I'm going to stick with the ratio zero here that you can do anything single player, you can do anything multi, but things are going to be easier or more difficult pending. And and uh, talking about what Gary said about needing four people to, to, to get into the nuke site, I wonder if they're suggesting that it's difficult combat which doesn't entirely rule out one player being able to do it if they're good enough. Well, I it's, think um, it's just the impression that they gave me was like, you know, Vic, you got to go over and you have to hit this thing. Then, you know, Mikey, you go over here and you do this part. And then it's like know, turn the key simultaneously. Kind something of something like that was kind of the, the impression, the way they said it. And like I said, I wish I could find it, but the impression on, on what they said, or, you know, just, kind of just gave me that impression it's like okay you can't just walk through the door and go okay i if i do this and then i can go do this and then i can go do this and fight through these people and then i can get to the end and i can launch the the codes or launch the missiles it was more like all right while mikey's over here taking care of this aspect of this stuff that allows me to go over here because you know it unlocks a certain door you know whatever the hell it was but that was just kind of the impression that i got oh the impression i got is that uh you could probably spend months in the game and not get all the launch codes for the the to be able to launch the nuke. But with multiple people playing it, each one of you is like getting a fragment and I think there's like what, uh four or five codes that you have to get? Well, um, here's the thing. There's four or five codes for one launch site. There's also multiple launch sites. So who says that the five the you're running with three other people because we know that your teams are going to be in groups of four, right? So mm. who says that they all have part of a code for the same site? I think uh, that that's a good point. I think yes, what it, it is. is when you get your code, it's going to tell you what site it's for. Right. Also, you can throw in the fact that uh, other teams of four 
other groups of people have codes and you can come together perhaps and put your codes together in order to get it to work and then go and attack the area, get resources, whatever we're going to do there. Well, it's nobody definitely. says that you like, let's say I'm playing with, with you three today and we went out and we gathered up three of the codes. And then tomorrow I'm playing with Denise and Kevin and Kat and, and we go out and find another three. Well, there's nothing that says that we can't, you know, somebody doesn't consolidate all the codes together and, you know, it gets launched at some other point. It's not the same original group of four that goes goes and does it, you know. Well, sure, there's going to be there's going to be multiple iterations of the same piece of the code out there. Otherwise, a guy like me could go around and pick up one piece of the code for every site on the map and then no one ever would be able to launch a nuke. Yeah, it has to be the way Vix. Um, <laughs> yeah. It has to be what Vic's saying. It has to work that way. Mm. I'm excited about the nukes. At first, I I wasn't excited about them, but now I am. Oh yeah, I, uh, I, I, I like the fact that it, the way they made it is that you can't single out somebody and nuke them and totally, you know, fuck them over. It's it doesn't matter. I mean, if you nuke them, by the time you get there, they're going to have a respawn, they're going to have rebuilt, and they're going to collect the materials that they got from the nuke site. Well, they're, they're, they're going to get yeah. warned anyway, so they can leave. You know, they yeah, pack what, up their camp and, you know, pop smoke and come back after the fact. What made me feel really good about the nuke situation is that they did mention that after a while, the radiation goes away and things start to, right. well, I don't know, quote unquote, grow again. So you're not like, decimating the map entirely sure mm -hmm. yeah the uh, map itself respawns and i like I, the fact that we get to create our own glowing sea where we want to yeah right i yeah. want to see what's down in the ash heap you know what what's going to change down there what's going to change in the forest once we drop a nuke there it, it is amazing the the uh the technology that they have brought up for that um I'm going to go to, I'm going to uh, reverse it again a little bit. Um, how do you think private servers will work? And, and before you answer, let me explain. Um, back in 2006, Pandemic put out Star Wars Battlefront. I'm, I know I keep going back to Star Wars. But um, Pandemic put out Star Wars Battlefront, and they actually put out private servers where you could rent them, and you had 100% full control. Um, I don't know if anybody else remembers that. Um, it was like 30 bucks a month you, you, you paid, and you had the control of booting, you had the control of banning, you had the control of what levels played. Um, how do you think, I mean, do you think they're going to take a little bit of that, or do you think it's going to be just like totally different? Well, as far as loading mods, I think it'll probably work with a lot like an FTP server with a, you know, probably a better GUI. Uh, we would and hope. Yeah, yeah, the checkboxes Vic was talking about. And if not, damn it, they should do it. <laughs> so, uh, so we we're in agreement there. And and the the rest of it, I think the private servers are going to run exactly where the regular servers do. Uh, other than the fact that you're going to have to rent or pay for them. I'm okay with that. So, do you think they they're, they're going to have renting servers or rentable yes. servers? Yes. I mean, I would hope so. Yeah, I, I would hate I, to I get think stuck. when they release pri when they release private servers, whether they're rented or free, you will see the public servers empty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Hey guys, real quick, um, I've got to check on my daughter. All right, so go I'll, check on Annie, um, and I'll and I will and I will answer this question. All right. Um, yeah. I played a game years ago. It was probably well, it was fourteen, uh, almost fourteen years ago, called. Uh, Wolfenstein Enemy Territory. And it was a multiplayer five on five set in the Wolfenstein world. Axis versus allies kind of a thing. And I, in short order, within a month of playing the game, I was part of a clan and everyone was over the age of 30. And it cost us about, I want to say like 40 or 50 bucks a month to have our own server for the game. But we controlled everything. We had our own moderators, and, you know, it was awesome. We all pitched in and just played on our server. 
I would be totally for that. Set up a separate, up a separate you know, Patreon or coffee.com or whatever and get a group of people together. If, if it costs us 50 bucks a month, awesome. Let's rock and roll. Let's rock and roll. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, I, that's how I actually started gaming online was uh, Star Wars Battlefront. And uh, our clan rented servers, and that's how we had clan battles was on our private servers. And we all chipped in for it. Um, we had different mods. Um, you know, uh, if, say, you know, one person wasn't available for that battle that day, we had another person who could control the room, and if somebody was being a dick, booted. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we're actually getting the echo from Mikey. His, his mic is picking up mine. I'm watching Discord. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, sorry, there's, I don't think there's a way I can fix that unless I mute it in between yeah, questions. Headphones. I do have headphones on. Weird. It shouldn't be picking it up if you've got headphones on. No, it could be that Mikey has me turned up on his oh, end of be. Discord. Yeah. So I'm oh, louder yeah. coming through the speakers than other people. Yeah, if you right-click on Vic and Discord and gotcha. adjust his volume. See if that helps at all. If that helps at all. No, now I'm hearing Gary, too. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you think we're freaking professionals here? This is the all, oh, that's the, that's the new uh, name of the, the podcast will be the All Amateur Hour. There you go. All right, so we're testing again. Oh, still barely picked me up, yeah. Still need more adjustment? And then <coughs> he's going to come back, and then he's going to be echoing. So check, we're all going to be check, echoing. Check, check. All good? I don't hear, I don't hear I don't the... Hear. Well, I, I don't hear you anymore, Vic, but I hear me still. All right. Got to love Discord. Discord. Yeah, no yeah. kidding, right? Better? Mo better check. Gooder? Check. Check. Nope, still there. Nope, still there. Still there. Who, you or Gary? Yes. Both. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Let me interrupt the show to stop the echoing. You can always just turn down your speakers a little bit. I don't even know how to do that. That's weird. Right. It's an apple. It's supposed to be simple. Mm. You can't even turn down <laughs> oh, the volume, get... then how does that work? Listen here, buddy. All right, is that better? Let's check. All right, I'm not seeing you light up when I talk. Okay. We got winners, winners, chicken dinners. All right. Sweet. All right. Now we can All right, actually... So, Gary, I'm going to let you take over for a minute because I am going to uh, need to walk the dog real quick. Okay, no problem. Walk the dog. Is that what we're calling it now? Well, it's usually code for going for a smoke. <laughs> Ah, yes. All right. So, um, well, that was traumatic. <laughs> How is Annie? Uh, clean now. Clean now. Oh, well, that would be traumatic then. So do you have thoughts on how the servers will work, Mark? Oh, I already answered. Oh, I already oh did you? Okay. Sounds good. Well, then we'll go on to my next question. Um, do you think events and other activities associated with online games, um, like I said, I don't know if you guys have played many online games, but a lot of times they like to put events and you know different things in. You think that's going to really um, extend the playability of 76, or do you think it's going to be kind of one of those things where maybe after a year or so, you know, people are going to like, eh, okay, they, they haven't put actually new content, they're just doing these events and that's not helping type of thing. Two ways to look at this. You could look at World of Warcraft, for example. I don't play it. I don't like it. But they keep adding content, and it's been going and going and going. Uh, it. The answer to your question is... Uh, thanks, Shell. Uh, the answer to your question is, it all depends on how hard Bethesda is willing to learn to work on the game and how long they're willing to support it with content. Right. Yeah, as long as they're putting in actual content, because, like, I know when I played um, SOTOR, 
they would do like these events that would last for like a week and it would be some level of content but and then you know there'd be kind of these achievements that go along with with uh doing that content and stuff yeah. like that and yeah yeah no doubt certain no doubt we're going to see things like community challenges yeah no doubt. and they'd have certain award rewards for doing it but once you got everything that the rewards that you wanted and all the achievements and everything a lot of people that I knew, they just stopped doing those events, even though they'd have those events, like say, every three months or whatever. You're like, eh, okay, oh, they're doing the uh, the rack goal event again. Okay, whatever. Who gives? And a that's shit? the other that's the other side on. of the coin. Yes, right. Gary, that's the other side of the coin, and I would cite Destiny for that. Well, that's and every MMO Destiny. does it. You know, I played Neverwinter, and they the the nice thing about Neverwinter is that they it's. Neverwinter is really tied in with like the original Dungeons and Dragons, the the tabletop role playing game. In that aspect, you know, so every year during they have the the summer festival every year in game. And while the first character that you started, you maybe you ran them through the summer festival, and the the next year it comes up, you're most likely not running the same character. So if you want any of the good stuff out of that event. Well, you're probably running a new character anyway that hasn't been privy to that event previously. So that's there could be some replayability there. That's an excellent point, Vic. I didn't even think of that. Excellent point. Well, like one of the things Sortor did <clears throat> was, and it, to me, it was kind of a, at a detriment to themselves, was well, they made most everything like what they called their, your legacy. So your legacy was if you had five characters that you played, they were all part of your legacy. And because they're all tied to your one account. So everything was legacy bound. So if I decided I had, you know, some item that this character uses, but I wanted to use on that character, no problem. I just put it, I could either mail it to them or I could put it into a legacy bank and then, they just go, you know, I log into that character, he goes over and pulls it out of the Legacy Bank, and boom, he's got that stuff. So I didn't have to, unless I wanted to have, you know, instead of sharing it or deciding I wanted to, to only use on that character or whatever, you know, I didn't really have to do it to try to get that ability. You know, like I said, they did it in that way, and that kind of screwed themselves. And, you know, personally, I hope that Bethesda doesn't do something like that. It was extremely handy, but man, it really kind of screws the, the whole point of using multiple characters, which actually goes into my next question. Um, so with the idea of playing online games, you know, a lot of people will have multiple characters as, as Vic brought up. How many different characters do you think that you might create and play regularly in 76? So like, I'm already thinking I might have you know, potentially at least two, one that I'm playing with like all of you guys. And then one that I might only play with my brother, you know, type of thing. So, um, depending on how often he's going to be playing or whatever. So, and then, you know, obviously not knowing what types of characters, you know, if there, if there are certain roles, I mean, they talk about having roles for your character, you know, one might be more apt to be a medic, you know, and this other one's more of a, um, a builder or a, uh, um, you know, a, uh, crafter or something like that, you know, well, do you think that could you see yourself, um, having multiple characters to, to fit those roles or, or what have you? I will. I will I'm gonna have at least two. Uh, probably you know, more. yeah, uh, I'll have, I'll have two max, but I'll probably only just have one. And the reason why I say so is because, uh, is because of uh, the perk cards, how you can shuffle in abilities in and out. So you're not really stuck to, hey, you know, I'm I'm just high charisma, or hey, I'm a great builder, or this or that. You're going to be able to uh, to really perk out your character for what you want to do at that point. That and sentimentally, I always play as a certain individual. So right, right. but I could I could see multiple. I, I don't see a problem with multiple characters for anybody, and I could see that, of course, happening for people that. Oh, they want to play with people on the PlayStation, or also they want to play with people on a PC too. So they get two copies of the game. I believe Die is one of those people that did that. Uh, that's another way of looking at it. So there's 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 nothing wrong with having multiple characters, but I think the way we understand the system 
in Fallout 76, it's less necessary now than it was before. Unless the perk cards are tied to how many points you put in your special. Right, that could be too. May yeah. could be, yeah. Uh, you know, so if I wanted if I wanted to play a medic or if I wanted, you know, because playing a let's say a sniper build is not going to be conducive to playing a builder character. Because I'm 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 focusing my special in different directions. While yes, I can swap out perk cards, if there are some perk cards that I can't get because my charisma is just not high enough, but I want those perks for my builder character, then then I'm going to absolutely have a builder character. Hell, I may have two. I may have a builder character that I run solo and a builder character that I run for group. And that may, yeah, and if that's the way that it works, then that makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and that's part of the thing, too, is, I mean, it's, um, we don't really know, you know. Uh, Mark and I are going to know in two weeks. <laughs> yep. Wait. What? And then we'll be sharing all that information with you guys. No worries. We're not holding oh, you, I, you guys are going down to. Yeah, we Quake are going Con. to QuakeCon. Yep. yep. And, yep. and character is going to be the topic of conversation for the Fallout 76 panel. No doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah, because for me, that's one of the most important things. And I am so glad that they're doing it. I mean, that they're, they, they said character and level and leveling up and level development, that is going to be the main focus for this panel. Noisy, well, you give awesome. Noisy, you give Evelyn a kiss for me. All right, can you yeah, hear me? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I was talking, and for some reason I muted myself. Oh, no, I uh, muted you. Yeah, oh. so... Um, <laughs> because you need yeah. to adjust Mark's levels. Yeah, yeah, right. Oh, Jesus Christ. So, um, one of the things, you know, that's the thing about Fallout 76. The big thing for me, other than all, obviously multiplayer, is the fact that the character, um, character creation, or not so much creation, but the build aspect of the character, is so much different than anything else. I mean, Fallout 4 was quite a bit different than all the other Fallout games ever were. Um, but it still kind of somewhat made sense and you can kind of buy into it and, you know, whatever. But this is going to be so much different, in my opinion, than any of the other games, any other RPG type game that I've ever played anyway. Well, and it's something I'm absolutely looking forward to. No doubt. The fact that if I need to make five different characters for the different roles that I want to play in the game, I'm just throwing five out as an arbitrary number. But... If if I really want to specialize characters, and I know that I, this character is going to be all strength, so it's not going to work out for being a medic character that I need to be focusing in intelligence, you know, I'm okay with that, and I dig that, because that's a role-playing aspect that we really haven't had. I think one of the, the bigger factors, too, is that I know when I play solo, I play completely different than when I play with other people. Uh, solo, I'm a little bit more sneaky. Um, I'm more cautious. When I'm with a group of people and I'm playing, I'm like, "Hey, fuck you! I'm going to take you out." You know, type of thing. Like I'm more, I have more balls. So my solo character is definitely going to be way different than my character that I play in a group. Makes uh, sense. Yeah, it it does. <sighs> it does. Um, I I can liken that to doing let's play videos. I mean, I play a lot differently when I'm actually recording myself doing it, than if I'm just sitting down playing something for myself in my own personal time. Yeah. You actually have personal time? Well, like <laughs> 35 seconds of it. Oh, nice. <laughs> Sweet. Right. I can rub one out in 35 seconds. Don't doubt me. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, Mikey. Next one's for you. All right. Uh, do you think that uh, we all know that, you know, the, uh, the Sony, you know, screwed the pooch for everybody about the uh, cross servers and sharing servers. But do you think that the Xbox and the PC will be able to share? I think that there's hope. I think that the fact that the demo is coming out for the Xbox first isn't just this contract agreement that that uh, Bethesda has with with Microsoft. Though I'm 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 pretty sure that there is one, but they might be trying to to do that. So I have hope. 
I don't know what the odds are, but yeah, yeah. I I, I wouldn't I wouldn't bet on it in Vegas, but I have hope to. Me, uh, me as well. That's why I plan on uh, buying an Xbox S just to be able to play with my friends that are like Gary and you and and Mark and you know, as well as keep my PS4 friends. Yeah, that's why I'm so pissed at Sony and why I'm so hopeful for Xbox because, you know, just everybody I know is that I, that I really want to play with and, and who I really want to play with, let me answer that question. It, it's all of you guys. And we're scattered, we're scattered cross-platform. So, you know, I've been trying to kind of assemble an army of PC players quietly over the last month of people. Uh, and, and the list is a lot shorter than I'd like it to be. Yeah, uh, it's too bad. I again, like fucking Sony, you know. Yep. <laughs> yep. I, I wish they would pull their balls out and be like, "All right, let's do this." Well, and, I'll tell you, if they if, if it ends up being that they really fuck it over for everybody, like they're like, I don't care if Sony's six months next year, you know. When the PS5 comes out, they say, "All right, now we're going to allow full mods and and uh, class pro- cl- cross platform everything." I bet they don't recover any of the people that will be leaving because of this shit. But Sony has left a horrible taste in people's mouths over, um, you know, Fallout 4 and and you know many other things in reality. Yeah, it's gone back too. It it's gone back way before Fallout Four. We can go back right, to right. the beginning of the PS3 and Bethesda and Sony have never had a good working relationship. Uh, go back to Skyrim on yeah. on a PS3 and and they joked sixty percent of the time it works every time. That's where I got that line from. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I on. <laughs> I'd like to see Bethesda grow some balls in this category, too, and go, you know what? If you don't want to do cross-platform, fine. We'll do cross-platform with Xbox and, and PC, and we will just make it a, a an Xbox Play Anywhere exclusive. Agreed. Yeah, just, just cut them out all together. And Not that I they... don't want PS4 players playing by any stretch of the imagination. Shit, I make sure that all my mods work on all platforms. No, I agree with you there too. But Sony's got somebody's got a somebody. Someone gonna, has to stand up to Sony. Yes, it might I as think, well be Bethesda. It didn't. Uh, I, I I might be misremembering this, but I could have swore at one point a game did do that. They had released a um, a PS4 version and an Xbox version, and all of a sudden they were just an Xbox exclusive. That same um, game, or the developer? Uh, the game, um, or the franchise, I will say. Uh, and I really can't, I wish I could remember what it was. Yeah, Kat, let me add to that. Everybody's pissed with Sony. Yeah. You I'd really have out. to do my research. <clears throat> that that's my just wing it. Yeah, that's what most YouTubers do. But yeah, there's a lot of people that I want to play with, hoping for cross-platform. Really hoping for cross-play. Vic being one. You yeah. know, I mean, about the only person that I haven't asked that wants, do you want to play Fallout 76 with me, is Gary, because it's a foregone conclusion. Oh, without gonna, a doubt, yeah. So, right. don't even have to talk about it. <laughs> right. Well, and, and who knows? In in six months' time, I may end up with, you know, because I have plans for building a custom PC anyway. And so I may buy it for PC, you know, well, if, when I build a PC, I will buy it for PC. But I'm not going to try and try and shoehorn it into this poor little <clears throat> six-year-old gaming laptop, you know? <laughs> I don't blame you. You know, and the, one of the things that I'm really curious about is, um, I have not heard anything yet about, um, um. Uh, like uh, hardware requirements or anything like that, particularly for the P, uh, PC. I'm assuming it's going to be the same as um, the the you know Fallout 4 is, um, using the same engine and and uh, um, all that kind of stuff. And considering the fact that PS4 and Xbox are going to be able to play it, then 
Like my computer should still be able to play it, and I shouldn't have to go up and go out and upgrade it just to be able to play it, you know. But that that's kind of one of the things I'm definitely curious about as well. Hmm. I hear Mike rolling that paper over. <laughs> next question. Um, actually, you know what? The next question goes into random stuff. Um. Is there anything else that before we go into it? I know we're uh, definitely past our hour, like we usually do. But uh, I'm good for a else? while. I might have to uh, check on Annie once more down the road if you guys don't mind. But I'm good for a while. And uh, sorry to do this. I don't mean to be a commercial, but I want to remind chat because there's a lot of people that aren't here. Everybody in chat tonight, and I'm going to be writing your names down, and I'm going to draw them out of a hat, and the winner's going to get a ten dollar gift card to. Uh, PS4, Xbox, you know, uh, Steam, whatever. So uh, thanks for being in chat and being active. Also, thank you guys for the interview. Uh, for that, I'm going to roll out uh, my uh, series Vampire tonight and do two videos every day until that's done. Sweet. Nice. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here and talk to y'all. Only two, Mark? That's it? <laughs> Don't get him to do three. Christ, I couldn't keep up last time he was doing that shit. <laughs> Uh, all right, so is there any other uh, thoughts that you want to add for 76? Any concerns, questions um, I, to the chat? Is there any questions you guys want to ask Mark and Vic about 76? Yeah, by all means. And while they're asking, I've got a few things. Um, <laughs> Mark has a notebook. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, keep it, I'll, I'll keep it quick, but these are questions that I've asked a lot of people already. Are we going to get to be able to have multiple blueprints? store multiple blueprints in the game as far as our camp goes. Also, uh, are we going to be able to share blueprints? Let's say somebody makes something really cool and I want it. Can we share that? That's a question I had. That also, might end up uh, being a mod. It, it might be. But, you know, just one blueprint doesn't make sense to me. And let and just not being able to share when you can share cards doesn't make sense to me. But I'm, I'm still worried about it. Also, we, we know... Here's another question. We know that... There are containers in the game that only you can only you can access. Nobody else can access the stuff but you, but you. Are there multiple ones? Are they going to be in the build menu? So if I want a regular ammo can, for instance, where I can just throw some of it in there and share it with anybody, that's cool. But if I want an ammo can that's just for me, you know, I, are we and nobody else can access it? Am I going to get that too? Yeah, it'd be nice like, if um, you could link that all around the map because you're going to be all over the place and. Should it have to run clear across the map to go get to it? That's ridiculous. I'm actually yeah. going to address that last question. From what I heard uh, through interviews from uh, Todd in Germany and so forth, if you have something that you want to share with the group, um, you're not going to be able to share with the group. It has to be individual people. And the way it is, is you're going to have to take it out of your container, which you are going to be able to have multiple containers and drop it on the ground for that person. Yeah, I I hope there's a little bit more to it than that, but you're you're right in what you've heard. Um, or, as as, since, yeah, uh, since we're going with the wheel of icons, it would be very easy for them to put something in there. And uh, matter of fact, we did see it. Now, I, let me strike that. It's in there. There is a trade icon in the trade or in the 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 wheel that we've seen on several different clips. Oh yeah, that too. Yeah, that's so there. so it will. It, it I imagine that will work much like in MMOs, where the, say you say, hey, I want to trade, and that person says, okay, let's trade, and it opens up, you know, side by side windows with what stuff do you want to trade and then you pick all the things that you want to trade and it shows up in the other person's and they can accept or they can throw in something that they want to trade back and all of that stuff so i don't think you're gonna to have to drop one item at a time on the ground that seems very inefficient to me oh when yeah you already have it built into the trade or into the wheel system with all the icons on it i think you'll be able to you know dump all of your gear that you're carrying onto someone else if you wanted to. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, both of those, you know, dropping stuff in the ground again is inefficient, but of course we're going to be able to do it. So I agree with Mike there and Draco. I have seen the wheel as well. So yes, that's the case. 
I just was hoping that we'd have like a, I could set out like a community storage thing. Hey, there's some water in here and just throw it in there. If somebody needed it also have an assortment of containers that nobody could access, but me and I can place them down wherever I want to in the build menu. Uh, that was my thing. Uh, another question I had was uh, for everybody, you know, you can place a camp practically everywhere, right? You know, I mean, there are some areas you can't place it, but when you build the camp and then you try to place it in a new spot, what does that do with terrain and trees and rocks and, and things like that? You know, I, I, I don't really get how putting the camp virtually anywhere, laying down a, I don't really get how that's supposed to work. So that's a question. That's Unless, a really good question. And, and, and this is just pure speculation on my part, so I wanted to note that right now. I think that anything that would, let's say you built in a totally flat, like, you know, meadow, and then you wanted to build on the side of a hill. Where you set your camp, the, the actual camp piece, the workbench, let's just use that term, um, it will then place things that it can and then it would say, okay, these things in your blueprint can't be placed on the current terrain, but you could pull up that blueprint. There's this whole building that you had previously built on the meadow, and now you can figure out where to place it in your new setup. Or the whole thing could be like that. It could say, okay, here's, here's the blueprint for every building and everything that you put down in your previous camp. And that, then you just go through and pick each blueprint and then set it down somewhere. All right, chat's got a couple of questions. Uh, noisy. Um, noisy and Brian. Uh, Vic, you want to attack these, or you want me to go for it? Yeah, so Noisy's asking about where you respawn, and uh, do you respawn where your last save or autosave is? Well, first of all, since you're playing on a server, you're always saving. Um, yeah. It's not like you, you're going to lose the last five hours of your play. It basically, whatever you were carrying at the time you die, you still have that. So that aspect of it, you don't have to worry about. I'll add noisy that uh that you probably save you probably respawn somewhere else if uh if uh in PvP if somebody kills you. I imagine that you would respawn somewhere else no matter who killed you. Because yeah. for me, if I'm going up against a death claw, I'm low level and I die, I do not want to be spawned right at the feet of that death claw again. Thank you very much. Well, they're they're probably going to put uh, you know special that's something I'm worried about that they might nerf PVP too much. I'm not out to troll and grief people, but I, I again, uh, you know, Pete Hines and Todd Howard have told us about these measures, but they have not explained how they work. So I, I can only speculate, but I'm worried about them nerfing PVP a little too much, but I think there will be a, a special respawn mechanic. If you get killed by an, a, another human player, uh, they did say that PVP is going to be on a request situation. So, like, if I shoot at you, you're pretty much requesting, do you want to fight? And you say no, and nothing's going to happen to you. What if you shoot at me and hit me and kill me? Uh, right. I don't, I don't <laughs> think that... No warning shots? <laughs> no, I, 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 the way that... The one thing that I heard was, they like, you can't just be walking along and get sniped and killed. Like, you have to agree to go ahead and engage in that, that fight. Sounds weird, but you're right, Gary. I mean, everything you're saying is right, but it's right. weird right now because we don't have any explanation as to how it works. Yeah, and I mean, one of the things like Sotor did was they had specific areas that were automatically you're you're basically giving consent by going in there. You're giving like a five second warning or whatever, but you're giving the consent of doing pvp when you go into that area if you're on like say a pve only server there were cer still certain areas that was pvp all the time yeah so maybe they're going to end up doing something like that which i think would be fine um, and they, they could also work, work out, out something like in <clears throat> like uh, going back to neverwinter if you're running through a dungeon there are a uh, certain you know campsites not campsites but like fires right and you got to go hit that fire to engage it as that's your spawn, that's your respawn point in that dungeon. So if some guy's running and he doesn't run over to that little campfire to trigger that as his respawn point, 
and he dies further on in the dungeon, he's going to respawn back at the first one, which is always locked in. So it could be something like you're going to respawn at a recent location that you were previously at, not the one that you were that you currently died at. You will right. respawn at a location that that you were just previously at. Yeah, uh, kind of like Vita Chambers in Bioshock. Yeah. Okay, Brian asks, are we going to be that friendly? Are resources going to be that prevalent? Uh, I don't know about... I, I think scarcity is going to be the name of the game, Brian. But, uh, but yeah, I think that uh, we put a unit together. You know, I mean, the, the group of people that we got, I, I, I think that uh, we're going to be friendly enough to share resources and what have you. Hope that answers that. Now, Absolutely. You know, I want to add to that. I mean, honestly, there's very few people in the Fallout world, uh, community, what have you, are real dickheads. It's not like with the Grand Theft Auto um, clan, you know, type of people where they just look around to be dickheads. I mean, a lot of Fallout 4, a lot of Fallout people are very supportive of each other, and I think there's going to be a lot more friend-making than there is enemy-making in 76. I think well, there's yeah. some that are curious. But a lot less 12-year-olds screaming into their microphones. Well, too. the one thing I'll say is that's what we experience within our community because we are a pretty close-knit you know, community. We are very outgoing and say, hey, go check out this person's channel. Go check out this person's channel. And, you know, and we all watch each other's stuff. Yeah, we kind of live in a bubble. Yeah, the community <laughs> grows and grows and, and what have you. And we're always bringing new people in, which is great. But I guarantee you those there's 12-year-olds that are outside the community that that are going to be dicks. I guarantee we, it, and we'll have to put up with them. We should. No, we won't have to put up for them. Once they get their ass handed to them a few times, yeah. they don't leave. True. Yeah, see, we, that's why, That's why Gary, we should, everybody here, we should thank God for Overwatch and Fortnite, because all of them be playing that instead. <laughs> Very yeah. true. Uh, yeah, why times, is Fortnite so popular? Because it's, it's free. free. How many times is <laughs> like, Hey, you should go play Fortnite. I don't fucking think so. No way, man. I, you know the way I the way I see it. I don't have a problem with Fortnite players. Don't get me wrong, but I I feel like it's a kids game. Yeah, I feel like yeah, it's exactly. a kids game. I agree. Hey, Sar. Hey, Sar. Ooh, friendly did, fire. Sir. Good question, noisy. I imagine that friendly fire would be off. Yeah, I, wow. would, I would guess so. I, I, I can imagine, Noisy, that Bethesda, that's one of the things that they're going to decide last minute. I, I bet you right now as we speak, they're going back and forth on Friendly Fire or not. But I am inclined to agree with uh, everybody else in the in the chat here. Probably not. Uh, you're right, sir. Um, we are friendly because we mostly are single players. But um, I, I think support. Is going to be. I think you know. Um, I'm going to trust in humanity, which is very dangerous. That the Fallout community is just going to be respectful. <laughs> well, the, and the way I think of it, anyway, is I even if they're not, I have little to no doubt. Even if or until they. Um, they they come up with the uh, the private servers or whatever they're doing in that regard. But let's say Xbox and PC can do cross-platform. I have little to no doubt that our community will quite regularly be searching each other out and all getting on the same map. Oh, we're going to dominate entire we will be Hell having, yeah. You know, <laughs> 12 to 18 people most likely on a regular basis on a single server controlling the damn thing. So there's not going to be anybody rolling in there, you know, doing anything with us because we're just going to have it monopolized. So I have no doubt in that. That's an interesting question, Steronium. I think that uh, yeah, probably yeah. next to everything is destructible. Actually, uh, from what they showed, I think what's going to be destructible is like, um, power, um, Food element. I thought I, I thought I see. I thought I saw a toilet go flying somewhere in there. I'm okay with it all being destructible. Yeah, me too. Especially how cheap it is to fix. 
Right. right, right and and right. it's a literal single button push to repair everything in your yeah. settlement. Well, uh, well, Noisy, how does it separate friends and PvPers? Of course, you've got your groups of four. And two groups of four, you know, I mean, if you had eight people that wanted to work together, you can, we know fast travel's a thing, which makes it a lot easier to get together. From PvPers, you know, you mean griefers? Uh, you know, I mean, you're really not going to get separate from them until we get the mechanics behind the anti-grief systems from uh, Pete and Todd. Uh, one of the good things, too, is that if you have a person that's strictly in there for PvP, they're going to be marked on the map. They're going to get a bounty put on their head. You're going to know where they are at all times until that bounty is gone. <laughs> Otto wins the chat. Yeah, he does. Request permission. See, I yeah. <laughs> that's the. I, I mean, I don't want people to get grief. Don't get me wrong, but don't you think that's like hand holding and nerfing? You know, when is it okay if we engage in this battle and Bethesda's gonna? I don't know what the solution is, but that's just a little nerf to me. Hmm. All right, so we're gonna move on. <clears throat> uh, those are great questions, guys, and great answers, by the way. Um, most of it all speculation. Some of it is what we do know, what we don't. Um, again, until we get it out and the game played, we're not going to know. I got one last thing. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, guys. I think it'd be cool if real players could have NPC kids in the game, babies. Um, though I know that's absolutely not going to happen, but in that case, uh, I'd have Gary's baby. <laughs> Aww. Aww. <laughs> How sweet. It's going to look Shucks. like Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. Shrek's All awesome. Right. <laughs> um, we're going to get into the uh, the random games, and it's still going to be a little Fallout-ish. Um, my first question is, uh, do you think Bethesda ruined the Fallout franchise? And if so, why? Well, they certainly haven't improved it, but no, they haven't ruined it. Yeah, I would say a definitive no. This uh, For anyone looking for Fallout 5, you guys got about five, six years to wait. Just like before they announced Fallout 76. Nothing has changed. Right. Yeah. If they want to take a new studio that they just acquired and, and do some spinoff with it, you know, like, like Todd said, he didn't want to wait another 71 fallouts before they could tell the story of, of Vault 76. You know, I'm okay with that. I don't think that this detracts. Now, of course, and I made that comment in my Discord channel, a very long, it made me break it up into three separate parts because I had way too many characters going. Yeah, that's the reason why I kept my answer short there, Vic. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Is that... For those of you looking for Fallout 5, you have five, six years to wait. Because we've got to get through Starfield. They've got to work on Elder Scrolls. Now they now that they have three studios, we're going to see more content more often from Bethesda Game Studios. Because they are flat out running three, uh, the three studios dumping into one game at a time. We're going to see more content more often from them and that is never a bad thing for exactly. those of you that were pleasantly surprised about 76 okay you know what the game could suck it could actually come out and blow it could be hollow like a lot of people say that uh sea of thieves is well if it sucks we'll be together at least right <laughs> <laughs> you know we're together in misery that's right. awesome yeah, you know, one of the things, maybe I come off from a biased perspective on 76 because I'm I'm pissed about a lot of the things in the game, but I'm even more pissed because I, I knew I was going to buy it anyway. Right. <laughs> like, oh, God, I don't want this. Oh, we're, God, we're I'm going to buy it anyway. We're, we're getting lore. We're, we're getting to live in that universe. And for the first time, we get to live in it together. Yeah, right. That's pretty awesome to me. I don't think that, that you know, uh, people have, uh, Fallout 4 isn't Fallout. I mean, you see the videos on YouTube all the time. You know, the Fallout franchise is dead. Well, you know what? Those guys are full of shit. 
And I don't. Those know are, in don't my know opinion, those are clickbait videos anyway. Oh yeah, that they're just haters. Exactly. Together in greenery, yes, strontium. Mm. But you know what? We'll build right on the edge of the forest so that you can build in the ash heap, and you'll be <laughs> totally happy. Exactly. You'll just see the trees in the distance. All right. So my my next question is, what is your preferred game genre? Ooh, RPG. RTS. Ooh. RTS. Ironically, I haven't done that on the channel yet, but oh, RTS. Uh, I'm going to have to uh, ashamedly admit, I don't know what RTS is, and if anybody else out uh, there doesn't shooter? know. <laughs> okay. no, real-time strategy. Oh, real-time yeah. strategy, okay. Stuff like uh, stuff like uh, Command & Conquer, Mike. Where the okay. hell? Vic, how did I get this shit in the middle of your video? If you, for those of you guys who don't know, I've, I've got some of... Uh, Vix and uh, Mark's videos that I, I pulled off their sites. I didn't ask permission, <laughs> but since we're talking to them, I figured it's worth it. But vic has got some big subs don't forget to subscribe and the thumbs up thing and all that kind of stuff. At the it must be at the end of this video. And I'm like, yep. it surprised me. I was like, I wasn't expecting <laughs> to see that shit. <laughs> I'm like, where the hell did that come from? I don't remember seeing that. That's too funny. Speak well, Speak you know what? Which. It still works for your channel anyway, Gary. So. There you go. Speaking of which, I do suggest that you do visit Mark's channel, Gary, while well, you're on Gary's. Mark's channel, Drake's channel, and my channel, if you're not subscribed, subscribe if you like what you're uh, you're listening to right now. Why, well, thank you, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, put the, I put the things in there a little bit ago. Put your links in, um, I don't know, about 10, 15 minutes in ago. In the chat. I'll, yeah, I saw. Yeah, I'll throw them in the chat again here in a little while as well. Yeah, I I, um, I like a game that that I know that I'm going to spend fifty to a hundred hours in, right? I, just out of the gate, I may put you know seven hundred or a thousand or two thousand hours into that game, but when I buy it, I know that you know I I think back to Witcher Three. I don't know how many hours I've put into Witcher Three. What a game! What a game! But I love that world. You know, and I, I love, even though Witcher 3 is very light on the RPG, because I'm, you're only role-playing as, you know, one character, you know, but that's all right. You know, I love the Mass Effect trilogy. The Mass Effect Andromeda, not so much. Uh, yeah, you I know? think we can all agree on that. That was a $60 kick in the teeth. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. but, but I loved playing a shepherd. I find myself torn when it comes to the genres. It, it really depends on the type of mood I'm in. Like if I come home from work and I'm really pissed off, I'll go into a first-person VPP and, and just you know get my ass kicked by some twelve-year-olds. But at least I get my aggression out. If I'm yeah, nothing you know, nothing lets me be less pissed off than getting my ass kicked by a bunch of twelve-year-olds. <laughs> yeah. Like fucker, just snipe me again. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta think about it, right? That motherfucker just gets you twelve times, and you you get him once, and that one time is so fucking satisfying because you know. Look, it's I got not you. the same as golf. You know, I can play golf for shit, but you know, every round I have like one or two shots that are just like, ah, oh, that's special. It's not the same, golf. though. It's not I the same. I love golf. Oh, I love golf, too. I got a membership to our local country club. I don't get out there near as much as I should, but... I think also I'll just play anything with a really great storyline. Uh, that's a good... Yeah, anything no, with a great storyline. No, because line. I play shit. I, I play State of Decay 2. It has no storyline for the most part. I've put over 600 hours into that game. Oh, I <laughs> sure? I, I could have scored a little more. I mean, you do stream about nice 8 crime. hours every night. <laughs> But oh. the thing Gary, I love there's... about State of Decay 2 is that I get to play with Denise and Otto on occasion. And, you know, I get to play with other people. And that's the real fun for me. You get to play with Sar on the rare occasions that he steps out of single player mode. You know? <laughs> it, it, yeah, it's always kind of a little hollow sitting down in your uh, State of Decay uh, streams, Vic, because ah, it's, I just want to I, I play with you. All right. And I just, you know, so yeah, yeah. Every time I sit down on the stream, I have fun. But 
I'd rather be there, even though I don't really have any motivation to play State of Decay Two. <laughs> right. I'm looking well, forward to I'm looking forward to remedying this with Fallout seventy six. And Gary, I wanted to ask you a personal question. How old yeah. are you? Forty four. Forty four. It's not often I'm the baby in chat. <laughs> this is the first time in a long time. Yeah, because I-, uh, I think. Um... Well, I know Mike's 40, and Vic, you're 43, uh, right? Uh, I'll be 44 this year, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, Brian's yeah. actually the baby, as far as I as far as far I know. Well, yeah, especially now that Kat, she went to bed, which I, sorry, I forgot to tell everybody, um, Kat ran off to bed. She was pretty tired, oh, which I... is understandable, considering she's uh, across the pond. So she wanted to say good night, oh, yeah. everybody. I didn't, I didn't see. Hey, good night, Kat. Yeah. <laughs> a little belated but well she she messaged me on uh in discord uh she just messaged me directly in discord so oh strontium's 30 yeah see i'll be 40 in february so i'm definitely the i'm definitely the baby in discord it's all uh, good i don't know uh, why i was i was thinking about that last night and i don't i, I don't know why i just <laughs> I was done. Yeah, I don't know why. Uh, getting back to what we were talking about, um, yeah, I mean, I do have my social aspects where I play GTA, and I don't, I, I like GTA, but I like it more because I can play with my friends, which is what I'm really looking forward to on 76. Agreed. Yep. I didn't buy the game for the game. I bought the game for the people I'd be playing with. Exactly, and I think if a 76 is as good as we hope it's going to be, most of my other games are just going to go to the side. Oh, sure. Well, you know, and I look back, well, I look through the current games that I have installed, because I always tend to run a little light on my installed titles. I have, like, you know, I'll say 45 hard disk titles in my drawer down there for my xbox one but i probably have that many or more digital titles but i typically only keep 10 to 15 installed but one of them is uh forza 5 uh you know i've got uh the uh splinter cell conviction you know, so I've got first-person shooters. I've got racing games. Of course, I got Fallout 4 and State of Decay 2. And so I have a wide range of genres installed for the same reason that Mikey likes getting his ass kicked by 12-year-olds. Sometimes you come home and you're like, you know what? I, I, I'm, not, I'm not in the right mindset to build. I'm not in the right mindset to just mindlessly run around and shoot zombies. I just want to get on a track and just smoke some tires for a while. Or I want to, you know, be the super spy and run Splinter Cell. So yeah, the, the name of know, the game is Variety. Variety, absolutely. and I think I think uh, Vic's channel and my channel both prove that. Oh, definitely. Um, so we're we, we're uh, starting to run short of time here. Yeah, I've got to um, get going soon too. Uh, Gary, your next question. Why well, is the genre the genre question? Oh. So it's up to me. All right. Um, so we kind of have a couple of questions in the Starfield, which we've talked about a little bit. Um, and I'll, I'll just kind of throw that out there. Um, we can kind of wrap them all into kind of one big question if you guys want. However you want to do it. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Mike, on your first one. Um, if, uh, I know you've got a really good opinion on this, Draco. Uh, because you did a video on it, but I mean, do you think Starfield will be like Fallout or um, be related to Fallout in some no. way? No. Well, while the wild speculation that that Starfield is the bridge between the Fallout universe and the Elder Scrolls universe, that was that's fan fiction on my part. They, I don't think that they will be connected at all. I think that it will be a true new IP. I think it will play a lot like uh, like Fallout and, and Elder Scrolls does, because that's what Bethesda does. But I don't think that they'll actually be connected in any way. I can't add anything to what Vic said, because everything he said is what I thought. Okay. 
Um, Gary? Yeah, so do you guys think the gaming community is ready and needs a space RPG? I know my yes. opinion. Yes. Without yes. a doubt. Yeah. Because, that, that's because my opinion as well. EA, EA fucked Bioware. And we aren't going to see another Mass Effect game for a long time. That's absolutely true. And, you know, I mean, your alternatives are like uh, Star Citizen. That's not ready yet. And if you, it, it's really kind of pay to play, technically. Um, let's see. What? No Man's Sky? That was a flop. I hear the next uh, DLC made it a hell of a lot better, but. but it's, what was that? Three uh, years look, later? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, you got. Bad. You got Eve Very online, strange. you know, I suppose, but you you never even get to see your look. We need something like a Fallout or a Skyrim in space. We need that, right? I mean, for me, somebody that's played, I, I you know, Knights of the Old Republic, to me was just a fabulous game. I loved that game, and then they had Knights of the Old Republic two. Um, I thought that was you know another amazing game, even though it never was quite finished. You know, it, it I think they hurried to get that out. Um, but, you know, and this kind of goes into some of maybe one of our other questions, but, um, either that or I wiped it, I don't remember, but for me, Star Wars, I love Star Wars. It's like my favorite, um, like genre of anything, you know, it's, it's that whole series of movies, even though they're, in my opinion, they were really starting to screw the pooch on with the most couple recent ones, but like when are they going to do a a Star Wars RPG that's worth a shit? Probably when they get away from EA, you know. Which yeah. isn't going to happen anytime soon. Right, of right. Not. Yeah. You know, I the EA they they're just completely you know, in my opinion, they they've just completely ruined everything that they've ever tried to do um within the, over the last couple of years with just doing some really stupid shit. Obviously, we could go with Disney in the movies, too. I had a conversation in, in Noisy Boy's comments about this, and we lined up pretty much uh, with what you're saying, Gary. Uh, recent Star Wars and everything surrounding it uh, makes me cry. Oh, yeah, yeah. My brother, he's he's pretty much to the point where he doesn't know if he'll ever like Star Wars again until uh, Kathleen Kennedy is no longer the... Um, you know, the head of uh, Lucasfilm. Well, really? you know, I love The Last Jedi. I, 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 I'm enjoying what they're doing, the, uh, the in-betweens. I actually want them to uh, turn uh, Rise of the Dark Lord into a, a movie, uh, if they're going to do in-between movies. You know, they have the Disney Channel that's going to be the new Disney streaming. channel that's coming out. Yeah. Well, they're going to be doing a, a streaming thing, yeah. Um, and they're going to have a live action series as well as continuing the Clone Wars. Right. Um, but, you know, like you said, the, the, as far as the gaming line goes, they're fucking up right and left. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they couldn't have screwed it up more. You know, here's how bad it is. This Yeah, let's this, not talk uh, about Battlefront 2, please. Yeah, this this guy yeah. that um I watch on a weekly basis. He he does a Star Wars um movie talk uh stream every every uh every week essentially. And um he was doing this series uh, uh one of his YouTube videos. He, he was doing this like weekly or bi-weekly series whatever where he'd play these different games with um VR games and the, somebody had installed a mod for Fallout and the mod was um, Darth Vader's lightsaber right and so here he's got the VR headset on and the, the you know the nunchucks or whatever the hell they are and he's running around with this lightsaber and Fallout running around and just like they'd spawn in you know death claws and everything else and he's just like laying waste to him and he goes he goes I've played Battlefront and Battlefront 2. He goes, that was the best Star Wars game I've played in a long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> like, how nice. bad is that? You're like, nothing oh, says, says it better than that right there. Uh. So, okay, just a quick side question here. What didn't you guys like about The Last Jedi? Everything. Um, the way uh, that they handled Luke, first of all. Yes. 
Yeah, Luke the, would have. I don't care what anybody says. Luke would have never done that. No, yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, uh, Leia, I couldn't stand that scene where she like flew, all right. the, you know, yeah. back in, and then and then what's her name is is nothing but a Mary Sue, you know, and and there was so much. Uh, so much social justice warrior politics. That, you, you want me to go down the list here, or do we want to move on with the questions? <laughs> okay, well, the, the, let me just talk about the whole Luke thing, okay? If you look back at the original trilogy, every time Luke picked up a lightsaber, he was less of a Jedi. But he was only never when, that? Only when he got rid of the lightsaber did he truly find mastery in the force. But he was never that guy, never that pessimist. He was always the optimist. Right. Exactly. Well, you, also, you also got to um, remember, though, Luke has gone through a lot. But yeah. isn't he also reflecting of Obi-Wan in his older years? I, I don't think so. I, you know, I mean, uh, Obi-Wan was, you know, uh, a little bit more willing to train Luke as opposed to Luke training. What's her name? What, well, can somebody to remind me what but, her name is. Um, Ray. 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 But the thing, the thing yeah. about Obi Wan is, Obi Wan wasn't running and hiding for the sake of running and hiding. His job was to look after Luke and make sure that when he came of age, that he was actually getting going to get trained. That yeah, was, Luke, that was his job. Luke it, ran it off and shame. Hide. Right. Yeah, Luke ran off in shame and and wanted to die there. He literally yes. said, "I came here to die." That's not the Luke you know? I know, right? And he, well, he, even though you know he's being told that that Leia and you know the Resistance needs his help, he's like, "I don't give a shit." I, you know, I'm just here to die. You know, screw if, everybody else. You know, and yeah, but you also got to remember, little baby, because Luke didn't figure out what I did within the first ten minutes of the film. <laughs> because he, he, was, he was there for five years, but but, like he, but he Luke, was, Luke was thinking. Luke was thinking. I failed my 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 charges, right? His students, and uh, he lost his nephew to the dark side. That made me pretty damn bitter too. Yeah, but there's but, no person on the. In the galaxy, more than Luke, that understands that these things happen, right? And he must have known about Snow too. You Nobody, know what I mean? Because yeah, Snow is one that term. He must have known that too. Yeah. Well, you also got to remember. I, I'm pretty sure Mark probably shares my opinion on this. Luke would have never even gone to that island. The Luke. Yes, that, I. Agree. The the real Luke, the way he should have been written, would have never been on that island. At least not for that purpose. If there was yeah, there's other another purpose to have him there, which I think, honestly, I think JJ was expecting something else. But that's the problem where I have with what Disney's doing with Star Wars, uh, particularly the saga films. They have no plan. There's like another they say, X, Y, Z. Meet these points. Fill in the rest. You know, make your movie. They're just like, okay, JJ, you make a movie. Oh, Ryan, now you make a movie. Just pick up where he left off and you know tie it in somehow. And then we'll have somebody else make the third one, and hopefully it comes out to be a good story. Well, no, yeah. it, that, certainly Disney has screwed it up. I do agree, Gary. And there's another but, Mark that agrees with you, Mark Hamill. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He says he said as such. But, but if you look back at Return of the Jedi, when was Luke most powerful? When he actually threw away his lightsaber. Oh, I'm not saying you're not correct in that regard, but he 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 didn't go there to be powerful. He didn't go there to help anybody. He went there to refuse having anything to do with anybody else, and he went there just to pout and say, well, it was me. And that's where I have the problem. Well, I can understand I mean, that. I, I, I know you know, you know we're all nerds and we know our history, but you got to remember, like Vic said, he failed... The rebellion. He failed the Jedi Council. He's been turned to the dark side and has been brought back. The man is broken. He's he didn't absolutely realize, he didn't realize that Ben had turned until or was even in the process of turning until it was too late. I I, I just don't think that he he would have 
would have done what he did. I don't I don't think that is within the the character that um the way that um Lucas originally wanted that character to be, you know, not just up through Return of the Jedi, but forever. I I just don't think that he ever expected or wanted that character to be ever to get to that point. And this is it too. I mean, do not pass go. It's all over. Luke right. is dead. Right. I guess. Not always. Well, not always. There, there's a lot of rumor that he'll be a, uh, a, a force. He's going to be a force ghost. Right. I anyway. think I've had my fill of Star Wars. Yeah. Let's let's speak. go ahead and move on with uh, our next questions. Um. Uh, have any of you heard of the game Vigor? You say bigger or vigor? Vigor, V I G I R. I think I've heard something about that, but uh, no, it's I can't game, say for sure. It's a game coming out of Norway. It's kind of like uh, I was gonna say a cross between Fallout and State of Decay Two, except no zombies. Um, it's gonna be all PvP. Uh, I they're not a link up in the chat, by the way. Cool, yeah, I'm, I'm looking it up now. I um, There's not a whole lot on it, uh, but it's going to be, you're going to go around, you're going to gather, you're going to scavenge, you're going to have a safe zone, you're going to have a, um, uh, a fort that you can build, but if you do not make it to your fort, by the time somebody kills you, they get all of your goods. Hey, take care, Noisy. Thanks for dropping by, man. Yeah, thanks, Noisy. All right, How's Noisy, doing? take care. Thanks, Noisy. Uh, what do you think about that? Something like that. I think it sounds cool. I'm. Uh, I I'd give you a better answer, but this is the first I've heard of it. I'll definitely look into it, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, it seems interesting. I don't know what kind of. Um, I didn't see what. I think it's coming out for exclusively Xbox. Um, if I saw that correctly, I'm not sure. Uh, but it really it looks like a great game. It's going to be a lot of uh, very hardcore survival. Yeah, they they liken it to a lot of these links liken it to DayZ. Yeah, I think I get the impression that I think the the um, the studio that's doing it actually did DayZ, but I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure. I, I watched it um, the other night, but I was kind of half out of it. <sighs> All right. Um, what classic games do you think still stand up to the test of time, even if you were to take away the nostalgia aspect of them? Um, what are we calling classic? Like over 10 years old? or Yeah, you know, 10 years, you know, 15 years, something like that. Uh, the first Bioshock, we could go with, uh, the original Doom 3. Doom 3 has aged very well, in my opinion. There's a big modding committee for it, too. Um, look, we, back to Nintendo and Super Nintendo, there's so many games that I, I still play, you know, like Mega Man 2, you know, I mean, fine, the graphics aren't there, but the platforming, the fun, the story, all the rest of it's there. And, and the art style is fine, even though the graphics aren't there. You can have crap graphics in a in a in a really good art style uh, like uh like say zelda breath of the wild i mean that's a graphically inferior inferior game in this generation to a lot of triple a games but the art style is so creative it's it's beautiful so uh yeah it's too many to mention to be honest with you gary i want to go back even further and go like super mario you can have a crap ton of fun. I mean, there's a reason why the the NES classic, that little mini that they sold. Yeah, look, um, let they me add sold this. so many units. <laughs> if right. if Super Mario came out t today, it'd be game of the year. Yeah. Oh yeah. I can I can remember just nonstop hours. You know, if, if even if it was just one of those things where it's like. We would time ourselves uh, to get through the game and just try to beat each other's best times. You know, shit like that. It was just like nonstop. 
Well, I got to get going at about five minutes, so yeah, right. yeah. Kate's going to be home. So, I'm. Any more questions? All right, I'm going to give you my wrap up question. If you guys were to make your own gaming company, what would you name it? Hmm. Oh, man. <laughs> See, this is the one question that you should have given us ahead of time so that we didn't have a bunch of dead air. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll go ahead and throw one out. Uh, uh, it's, it's, something, it's something my nephew and I screw around with. Uh, uh, the name of the company? Mm -hmm. uh, I'd call it Icon Games. Nice. That's a good one. It's yeah, just like kind that. of this inside joke between me and my nephew when we game and, and, and do stuff. Basically, my nephew runs my life when it comes to what games I should play. And oh, yeah. Sammy's always telling you, you know, one, how you screwed up, and yep. two, what game to play next. <laughs> yep. Yep. He runs my Cracks life. Cracks me up. Um, <sighs> Shit. <laughs> You put too much thought into it. <laughs> I know. Uh, I can tell you, my going way back when I first started making uh, videos and and, and uh, I was making avatars for people. Uh, Smoking Skulls Studio. It's not bad, Draco. If you if you uh, don't say two dicks games because that's copyrighted, I got that. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. No, I would have to go um, with the Realms Gaming Studio. I like nice. that. That is nice. I like that. Yeah, I think I, I think I, I don't know. Without giving any prior thought, I was just thinking something like Binge Gaming. But, that Did you say Venge or binge? I mean, binge, binge? Like like binge, you binge watch uh, Netflix and stuff like that. I gotcha. Yeah, I like it. All right, my last question, and then we'll let you guys go, and I appreciate you guys being here, by the way. If you were like asked to design a game, what would it be, including uh, gameplay style, environment, etc.? Um, yeah, um, it would be a game based in the Firefly universe. Firefly. Uh, nice. A television show, without a doubt. Definitely. Base yeah, opera. That would be awesome. Yes, and I'd yeah. like to I'd like to have it something similar in style and format to to a Fallout or a Skyrim, something along those lines. But without a doubt, it would be Firefly. That would be fun. Oh, that'd be pretty cool if that's what uh, Starfield ends up being. I mean, it that'd would be really sweet. Yeah, it would. <laughs> yeah. It might end up becoming my new favorite uh, um, franchise. Uh, for me, it would probably have to be a fantasy adventure game. Where it... Um, think Skyrim, but more visceral. And not, not so, so much fantastical, if that's a, a word... I, I'm thinking, like, if I could take a tabletop D&D &D game and turn that into a video game, that would be awesome. I think we actually uh, yeah. was discussing this before. I think that is a great idea. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Gary, do you want to answer that question? Or? Um... I don't know. I think I think for me it would it would probably I um I I really like Mark's answer. I think Firefly space opera. Um, I mean, post apocalyptic is always like right up there for me as my favorite genre for movies, stories, um, video games. You know, all that kind of stuff It's just something since I was a kid. It always kind of um, you know really appealed to me so hey, Jeff, fallout will always be right up there for me but a space opera especially like a firefly are you freaking kidding me you know being you know <laughs> you know you're you're basically a bunch of smugglers and then you know randomly you end up doing all this good shit for people like <laughs> oops <laughs> you know and that, that's pretty and cool that, yeah and that one there i would i would not bitch if it was multiplayer either mm-hmm no that'd be pretty cool hey jpic 
Oh, all right. Uh, I'm actually, uh, you know, I'm going to uh, agree with Gary and uh, Mark on this one. I like the sound of that. Um, I might maybe tweak it a little bit with some uh, some dead space action in there because I just like a little horror in it. Oh, don't worry. Firefly's got that. <laughs> you got the Reavers, baby. Oh, yeah. Right. True. How much more do you need? All right. Well, unfortunately, Jay Pick, you came in at the wrong moment. We we're wrapping up here. <laughs> we're wrapping it up. Yeah. Um, I want to thank our guests, Draco and Mark. Uh, do you have anything you want to plug before we say our goodbyes? I just want to say, it, uh, Draco, it's nice to speak to you in person for the first time. Uh, and um, it, as good of a YouTuber as you are, as all of you are, it's I'm I'm honored that you thought of me. So thanks. And chat, thanks for coming out. And uh, Mark, uh, the feeling is absolutely mutual. It was an absolute pleasure to finally speak to you for the first time and uh, hang out with you for the last couple of hours and uh, give Annie a big, uh, a big hug from all of us. I and sure will. Uh, I want to uh, thank uh, Mikey and Gary for, uh, for hosting this whole thing and putting this podcast together. Uh, I'm involved uh, as a co-host in another podcast that will soon be launching on iTunes and all over the damn place. And we will be doing, uh, uh, I, I, there's talks about doing live podcasting. Anyway, I'll have more information on that uh, coming out soon. But one of the things that I am absolutely going to be doing is I will be doing a segment within those podcasts about um, hidden gems in the uh, the video gaming world so i will be uh, highlighting uh youtubers and twitchers and 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 mix content creators uh some much smaller channels some medium-sized channels and just talking about the different things that those channels are doing uh just to help the community uh because the more that we help each other i think the better we all become and um, I absolutely will uh, be highlighting uh, pretty much all of you at some point. <laughs> you know, if you're listening to this and you, and you are a content creator, and I want to uh, to thank everyone that not only subscribes to my channel but comes and hangs out with me during my live streams. There are many things that we could all be doing every night of the week, and it it's really humbling to me. Uh, that you guys choose to spend your time hanging out with me. And that is a great honor that I hope to never um, never ruin. So, And uh, I'll be putting out a bunch of different content in the months uh, coming up. Hell, I'm looking at buying a PS4. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just to play one stupid game. If I could rent one for a month, that would be awesome. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so I got a bunch of stuff coming out. So uh, you may not be into State of Decay two, but um, I've got you know Tomb Raider coming out. I'll be doing Detroit Become Human. Of course, when Fallout seventy six hits, um, it'll be a lot of content from there. And I just want to thank you all for coming and hanging out tonight. Yeah, awesome. I can't stress that enough, Chad. Thanks for coming. It's you know new you people. Guys. You guys are great. Thanks a lot. Yeah, you guys have been great. Uh, again, I am Quick Smoke. Um, I got right now a Let's Play of L.A. Noir going on. I'm in uh, episode two out right now. I do have uh, plans for 76 when it comes out, like everybody else. And Gary? Yeah, I'm about ready to wrap up my Castle Evolution uh, build, which is a continuation of my Evolution of a Settlement uh, build challenge character um, <laughs> after I finish the castle um, that should pretty much finish the story um, so um, there may be a, a like an extra video or two after the castle is actually um, put out there but so that's going to finish that character off and I probably won't do anything else with that character um, I'm guessing so um, but I'll be continuing on with my Fallout 1 videos and then moving into Fallout 2. At some point, um, when I can clear off enough space to begin, I will getting, be getting the, my Falcon build going. And so I'm really looking forward to that. I'm kind of nervous about doing it because 
I'm afraid I'm going to screw it up, but uh, since it's been a while since I've actually put together a model, but we'll see how that goes. Um, but well, yeah. for the oh, that's going to be fun for the no. people that for the people that weren't here at the beginning of the stream. What I'm doing on my channel is uh, just to figure out all the things I can do with a cordless drill in my butt. So <laughs> nice. there you go. And, no, I got a lot of games coming out. A lot. Um, I'm not going to list them again because there's like 20, but we're ready to go. We're loaded up over here. Sweet. All right. Well, that being said, I'm just going to add in here. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Draco, Mark, uh, chat, um, everybody in chat, Gary, for hosting this. Um, uh, we are yet a small but growing community. Thanks Let's very much, fellas. Support each other and, uh, and love each other because without, without each other, we are nothing. Definitely. I just want to thank uh, both Mark and Mark and Vic again for coming out. Really appreciate it, and uh, hope you all have a great night. It was a lot everybody. of fun. Hey, you guys, take care. Good night, everybody. See ya. See ya.